This is the Discover Card Countdown to Three as we get ready to go racing. Lights, cameras, and traction. The stage is set for the 2004 NASCAR Nextel Cup season. Tonight, many of the top names in the sport are ready to race ready to chase the first checkered flag of the year. No points, just pride, plus a $1 million purse. Months of cold snow and ice are about to melt away. Welcome to the home, the heat, and the heartbeat of NASCAR. Daytona, the home to racing history. The winner at the Daytona 500. The host to racing heroes. A warm and welcomed end of winter sight to the eyes of the competition starved driver and race fan. These seats and this one are about to be filled for 10 hold your breath months. And each week, the only one that dares to get up will be the one guy that's sitting in victory lane. A new season never gets here fast enough. Then it begins with a blur. The first green flag, a starry eyed field an old-fashioned winner-take-all shootout on a Saturday night at Daytona. NASCAR is back. It's time to take your seat. Sports presents the 2004 running of the Budweiser Shootout, live from Daytona Beach, Florida. For 62 days, the competitive spirit of race driver and fan has been stuck in park until now. Tonight, a field full of stars and a world full of fans are ready to put their teams and their screams back in gear. It's February. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to start your engines. Hi, everybody. The entire TNT race family is proud to welcome you live to Daytona and to the fourth season of NASCAR racing on TNT. I'm Bill Weber. Thanks for having us in for the race, a race that means nothing unless you win it or unless you're a fan. It's 19 guys going 70 laps, more than $200,000 to the winner, and we all get a taste of what's in store next Sunday in the 46th running of the Daytona 500. You've waited patiently since November. Wait no longer. For all you do, this Bud Shootout's for you. Defending race winner Dale Earnhardt Jr. will attempt to make it back-to-back -back Bud Shootout victories from the very same position as last year, dead last in 19th. Junior, is your car as dominant as it was last year? Uh, well, it can be. We, uh, we've got. I think everybody in the field's got a shot to win. They keep closing the gap on us, and it's re it's really evident now. Our uh, our car's uh, you know kind of right there in the middle of the mix. So just happen just happen to. Get a right pit stop there at the end and come out up front or come out toward the front, maybe get the help we need at the, at the end. Uh, we got help from Ryan last year to win the race. Uh, you're not going to do it by yourself, so hopefully we get that help when it comes time. Three drivers have pulled off the back-to-back -back in the shootout before. Junior will try to make it number four to Marty Snyder. Two-time Bud Shootout winner Tony Stewart will start one spot ahead of good friend Dale Earnhardt Jr. tonight, and so is the plan to lasso that eight car and kind of help each other get to the front? Uh, it's always worked really good for us here at Daytona and Talladega, so... Uh, you know, uh, we, we always, uh, if our cars are both good, and he, he's always had a good car, it's just a matter of whether we get to have a good car. So, uh, you know, the guys in the Home Depot team, uh, they worked really hard last night, and uh, I think we found some things today that are going to make us a little faster. So, uh, you know, we got nowhere to go but forward. You know, having Dale Jr. back there and Jimmy Johnson, uh, I'm sure we're all three going to work together and uh, work our way up there. Last year in this race, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Gordon started 18th and 19th, but finished first and second. Dave Burns. Marty standing by with the Hendrick Motorsports teammates here. We'll go with Jeff Gordon first, who has a much better starting spot uh, than the previous driver you mentioned. Front row, Jeff. Uh, what about your car? Good enough to be there at the end? I think it is. I mean, it drove really good yesterday. We made a few adjustments on it, but, uh, you know, every time the car was out front, we had no problem staying there. But uh, there's a lot of guys behind us that are going to be coming in a hurry, and, you know, it'll be interesting to see if we can keep them behind us or 
you know, what we're going to have to do. But, I mean, I, I think that this is a long race compared to what it used to be. And a lot can happen. Uh, and, and I'm looking forward to all the challenges that are going to be thrown at us. And if we do get shuffled back, I'm looking forward to, to working my way back up the front. All right, now, Jimmy, how much, how much do you need this guy right here, Jimmy? How much do you need to work with your teammate tonight? He's behind me. I need him right now. Uh, teammates are very helpful. You know, I, we've, we've been trying real hard to make it work for us, but the 8 and the 15 have been able to make it work better than any team cars out there. And, and uh, you know, Junior's by himself tonight, so we'll see if we can beat up on him being a man down uh, and, and see what happens. But I'm coming from the back, and uh, it's going to take me a little while to get up there, but I'm sure we'll get this Los Monte Carlo up front and have a great night. All right, one way to get into the shootout is to win a Bud Pole. Last year, Ryan Newman wasn't taking any chances. The checkered flag waves first over Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman does his talking on the track. He's celebrating victory lane. It is amazing how this 12 punch does it. The celebration is on for South Bend, Indiana's Ryan Newman. Would you believe they've done it again for the eighth time this season? Ryan Newman is the first one to the checkered flag. Eight wins, 11 poles last season. I don't care about that. Congratulations. You got married during the offseason. You and Chrissy, congratulations. Thank you. That was uh, definitely a big step in my career uh, off the racetrack. So uh, I'm pretty sure everything will work out good for the rest of my life. Were you more nervous on the track or more nervous at the wedding? I wasn't nervous at the wedding. I was pretty surprised. Uh, but uh, everything turned out really good. I had a lot of great people there, friends and family, and uh, uh, ready to look forward to the, this season. Well, that's great. Well, you start 16th tonight, your third shootout. What's going to happen out there? I don't know. Just listen to what those guys had to say. Just uh, look out and watch out and hang on. Uh, it's it's usually always a tough race. And here, just like uh, I think you said at the start of the start of the show, it's all about the money and it's for the for the win and for the fans. And uh, everybody's going for that first spot. There's no points, and uh, we'll have to see what happens. It's going to be a heck of a shootout. Everybody remembers the eight wins in the 11 poles, Ryan. You guys had a little trouble getting out of the gate last season. You really can't afford that this time with the 26 race format. Yeah, we had more hang time here at Daytona than an <laughs> NFL uh, field goal, but. Uh, you know, just have to see how things happen. Uh, you know, you can be at the right place at the wrong time and the wrong place at the right time. And um, it's just a matter of being being right, getting getting everything right. And uh, you know, Matt and the guys did a great job on the Altel Dodge last year, doing that several times. And uh, you know, we're starting all over again here. All right. Well, good luck tonight to Mr. and Mrs. Newman and the rest of the season. Thank you. All right. Ryan Newman rolls off 16th tonight. Here's what's in store for Ryan and the rest of the guys in the Bud Shootout. 19 guys go 20 laps. Then the caution comes out, and the running order is locked. Cars can pit for routine work during a 10-minute intermission. Then it's a 50-lap shootout. Cars cannot go 50 laps on fuel here, so they will have to stop again. Teams will race on a softer tire this season. That tire is in use tonight, so tire management should be a factor. Caution laps do count, but the final 50-lap segment must end under green. Those are the biggies. The rest of the details as the race roars along. That's the first lap. Here's what's coming up on the Discover Card Countdown to Green. A new season with new stories. We'll check out the challengers and NASCAR's new chase for the championship. Dave Burns discovers there are some stand-up guys in the Budweiser shootout. And Wally Donovan hits the track to explain the frustration of rush hour traffic at nearly 200 miles an hour. All just ahead on the Discover Card Countdown to Green. Discover Card Countdown to Green is brought to you by Discover Card. It pays to discover. And Cialis. And the Discover Card Countdown to Green races on live from Daytona Beach leading up to the Budweiser shootout, the opening of the NASCAR Nextel Cup season. No points on the line tonight, but as we talked about, a lot of fun and a lot of money. But as Dave Burns discovered, not every guy is cut out for the shootout. Earning a spot in the Budweiser shootout is as simple as being the fastest qualifier at any event in the previous season. These guys all won at least one Bud Pole last year. Of course, Ryan Newman barely kind of hogged the show with 11 Bud Poles in 2003. But some drivers that you might expect to be here aren't. Last year's series champion, Matt Kenseth, no poles last year. 28-time pole sitter, Ricky Rudd, no poles in 2003. But you say, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he didn't have a poll last year. Surely his Budweiser sponsorship doesn't give him a free bid into this. Well, no, remember, he won last year's shootout. And once you win the shootout, just like any of these guys up here, you're in it for life. 
Now, perhaps the most interesting story of this year's shootout is a guy who had to earn his way into the shootout twice. And by that, I mean Boris Said. Now, he not only won the pole at the Twisting Turning Road Course in Sonoma, California, but then he entered the race at Talladega Super Speedway because he had never been in a stock car or a truck on a super speedway. I think the idea was to convince NASCAR and perhaps himself. Seeing likeness of Boris joins us now. Boris, man, I'm happy for you. I'm glad you're in this thing. But it's Daytona. It's under the lights. It's a shootout. What are your emotions right now? I mean, it's indescribable. I mean, this is the coolest thing in the world. And uh, I just want to thank the U.S. Army and USG Sheetrock brand for giving me this opportunity. All my friends at No Fear, Spy, and uh, Intense Mountain Bikes. How about drafting in the pack? What's that been like? It's hard to describe. I mean, it's controlled chaos or uncontrolled chaos. I mean, last night was my first night, and uh, I mean, I think those boys are going to teach me a pretty hard lesson tonight. But uh, I held my own last night, so hopefully if all goes well tonight, I can finish with a decent finish. All right, Boris and all these guys are in the Budweiser shootout, a race that's almost always won by a paper-thin margin. Bill? Thanks, Dave. Is in his first shootout, he starts behind pole sitter Jeremy Mayfield. Terry Labonte has two series championships, and once you're watching NASCAR on TNT. Budweiser shootout combined to win 24 of 36 races last season. Together, these 19 guys have compiled 323 wins in what is now the Nextel Cup Series. Last season, Matt Kenseth won what was the Winston Cup Championship by 90 points over second place Jimmy Johnson. 24 of the 36 races last season were won by drivers that finished in the top 10 in the championship standings. Once again this season, it's 36 races. Points are critical every week, every race, for everybody. But how the championship is determined is something that's just a little bit different. With its bold new name and bright new colors, the Nextel Cup Series is racing into a season that brings change and challenge to the front row. The revamped point system will take the top 10 drivers after 26 races and drop them into a 10-race tournament that will determine the series champion. If you're right on the edge of making that top 10, it's going to be uh, you know, real important to get as many points as you can to make sure you're, you're locked in that top 10 to have that shot at the end of the year. I'm just concerned with 10 to go. People might say, hey, it's over if you're not in the top 10. What are we involved in the sport for? But you know what? If you're a real racer at heart, you won't think that at all. If you have one or two bad finishes uh, in those first 26 races and you end up right there at 10th where you wouldn't have been battling for a championship in years past, now you've got a second life and you have a chance. The focus from February to the finish in Florida in November will be on the men inside their machines. Under the microscope from the first lap will be breakout stars like Ryan Newman and Jimmy Johnson. And Ryan Newman, for the eighth time this season, climbs out of his car in victory lane and the celebration is underway. Newman roared into victory lane eight times last season, but failed to contend for the championship because of a sluggish start to the year. He cannot afford that this time. Jimmy Johnson sweeping New Hampshire International Speedway races in 2003. Johnson has shown he is a true title contender and might be the best bet for the cup among the drivers seeking their first championship. But in their way, Dale Earnhardt Jr., third in the championship standings last season and racing into 2004, more comfortable and just as confident with new leadership in place at DEI. I feel like I'm uh, the best driver out there. I feel like I'm with the best team. Uh, and uh, we, we avoid ourselves of all the mistakes that we make. We, we can make it happen. The cast of former champions challenging for the next El Cop should be quite lengthy. Matt Kenseth is poised to defend his title with a promise of more wins and another solid season. There's the 2003 NASCAR Winston Cup champion, Matt Kenseth, the final Winston Cup champion of the Winston era. Jeff Gordon begins his chase for a fifth championship after the strong finish to the 2003 season. Teammates Tony Stewart and Bobby Labonte rush forward into the new year with good wishes, but without the day-to-day -day guidance of owner Joe Gibbs, who has returned to coaching in the NFL. The season begins with a new name on the leaderboard. The question is, 
when the season ends, whose name will be on top of the championship standings? And of course, there's Kevin Harvick and Kurt Busch and Rookie of the Year Jamie McMurray and Rookie Brian Vickers. Aerodynamic changes, softer tires, softer walls, fewer provisionals. The first full year with new NASCAR chairman Brian France at the wheel. Plenty of stories to unfold all season long, and it continues tomorrow at noon Eastern time live on NBC with qualifying for the Bud Pole for the Daytona 500. The desperate drive to lock up one of the two front row starting spots will also set the field for the twin 125-mile quali qualifying races that happen here on Thursday. You'll see those live right here on TNT at 1 o'clock Thursday afternoon. And in one of those races, you will see this car that is driven by Jeff Burton. With that story, here's Matt. Bill, tonight marks the first of two straight weekends of all-star celebrations right here on TNT. And Jeff Burton, you're the fortunate one to be involved in both of them, the only person. Well, I wish I was involved in this one tonight a little bit closer. Uh, that's one of our goals this year, to sit on the pole so we, we can get in this race. Whenever there's a race going on, I want to be in it. But this deal is really cool, too. The NBA All-Star Game Sunday night of the Daytona 500 on TNT. That's going to be a lot of fun. I'm a huge basketball fan. I think they're the best athletes in the world. And, and uh, to, to have a chance to do some stuff with some of those guys and, and then Sunday, that Sunday night, go home and, wa and watch that ball game. It's going to be a lot of fun. You've got your posse behind you on the roof. Oh, yeah, man. You know, we got to have Charles and Ernie. And, of course, uh, we don't talk a lot about Kenny because he went to Carolina, and I'm a Duke fan. But, but uh, it's, it was, we did the pregame show with those guys last Thursday. And then we're going to go uh, Monday night and uh, go see LeBron James play in Cleveland. And real excited about that. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. Been doing a lot of basketball games and uh, went to a hockey game the other night and then came home and watched the Duke Carolina game then got here and got in a race car. I'm pretty happy right now. Big celebrations coming up tonight and next weekend, but tomorrow for Jeff Burton, he'll try to chase his first Daytona 500 pole. Bill? And just to get the legal stuff out of the way, Charles Barkley's picture is not actual size. If it was, there wouldn't be any room for Ernie and the rest of the guys. I'll be right back, I think. Discover Card Countdown to Green, brought to you by Discover Card. It pays to discover. The two races here at Daytona and the two at Talladega require a restrictor plate that slows the cars by reducing airflow to the engine. Less air means less horsepower. Less horsepower means less speed. That means cars race around this huge two and a half mile track in a big pack with no margin for error. Restrictor plate racing 101 with Wally Dallenbach, right where he usually is in the middle of everything. This is a race that you've got to be mentally prepared for because it is mentally demanding. we got to rely on each other as well as hand signals. So I'm sitting here in the middle of the pack, and I'm concentrating on Jason Jarrett. Now, I want to stay right on his bumper, but i got to also watch what's going on behind me, to the left of me, to the right of me, over there, over there, everywhere. i got to be watching all around me 360 degrees. Now, if I see some trouble, or I think something's going on up in front of me that might be a little scary, I'll put my hand up like this. That's going to tell the driver behind me, watch out, something may happen. If everything's straight down ahead of me, I'm going to say, OK, let's go, we're cool. Now, if something bad has happened in front of me, the hand signal's going to be like this. Whoa! There's something big happening in front of me. Check up. I don't want you running in front of me. I'm going to do the best to get through this wreck. Now, I'm on the outside. I'm chasing this guy in front of me. But all of a sudden, something happens up ahead of me, and i got to check up. i got to move way down here to avoid it. There's old Frank. Frank's got no place to go. He's got to be careful. Sometimes you get cars together. That's when the chain reaction happens. That's what causes the big wreck. And our thanks to Frank Kimmel and the rest of the ARCA guys that were brave enough to get out on the track with Wally. Because more cars push more air out of the way, cars that race together will race faster around this track than a car that's out there by itself. You'll see that demonstrated tonight at speeds approaching 200 miles per hour. There are seven former series champions in this field tonight. Let's meet three of them, starting with Marty. Bill Elliott making a record ninth, 19th Bud, uh, Bud shootout start tonight, but... Starting your first series as a part-time driver every race this year, 
for you is, is precious, Bill. How, how big would it be to win tonight? It'd be big. I mean, for this whole race team and what Ray's put together the last three years, it would be big. And, you know, not going on and running the 500 on Sunday, it'd be a special, it'd be a special night for us. After this, his next race, Las Vegas in early March. Dave? Daytona International Speedway has been historically very good to Dale Jarrett. Four wins in addition to your two shootout victories. Is the car good enough to get you back on the winning track, DJ? Uh, yeah, I think the car's good enough. Uh, we just have to get position. Uh, yesterday in practice when we were out front, uh, we were, were very good, uh, but passing still difficult. So uh, starting back here, we're going to uh, just see what we can do, make as much ground up here as we can and try to make as much up uh, in that last 50 lap segment coming on to pit road and getting off of pit road and uh, see what we can do with them. Great. Thanks, DJ. Let's go to Matt. 98 but shootout winner Rusty Wallace a new tire here tonight Rusty does that change when you want to make that winning pass junior did it with four to go last year well if he did it with four to go last year I think I want the best tires at the end of the race probably I don't want those guys ganged up behind me with fresher tires than I got so I don't know what the strategy is Larry and Matt Borland are talking about it right now they're working together really good I don't let those guys make that decision but I think I got one hell of a good hot rod tonight I feel good about it he starts that hot rod from the 11th position to Marty Snyder Kevin Harvick in just his second bud shootout. So who do you have to beat to win this thing, Kevin? First thing we've got to do is not not let the driver beat himself. So uh, this GM Goodwin Chevrolet has been, been pretty good every time we've ran it. So uh, everybody's got to beat. you got to beat everybody in this deal with the way the rules are and everything. So it uh, should be fun. Driving the car that took him to four top tens at restrictor plate races last year, Bill. Thanks, Marty. This is the 26th running of the Budweiser shootout in a variety of forms. Last year, Dale Earnhardt Jr. came from 19th to win it, the deepest in the field any winner has ever started. Now, before Jr., the deepest any eventual winner had ever started was 15th, twice. Neil Bonnet in 1983 and Dale Jarrett in 2000. In fact, in 2000, Dale Jarrett won the Bud Pole for the Daytona 500, won the Budweiser qualifying race for the shootout, then won the shootout, and a week later, he won his third Daytona 500, all when he started 15th in the Budweiser shootout. Tonight, Dale Jarrett starts 15th in the Budweiser shootout. Now, you don't have to look it up because we already did. The countdown is at zero, and the Budweiser shootout is next. This has been the Discover Card Countdown to Green. Let's go racing. Sports presents the 26th running of the Budweiser shootout live from Daytona. Tonight, 19 drivers back in the seat under race conditions for the first time in nearly three months. A night when it's hard to tell who is more excited, the competitors or the fans. Now it's my pleasure to send it upstairs to three guys who are really excited because they just found out they saved a bunch of money on their car insurance. No, just kidding. They're excited because they call the Budweiser shootout tonight and the Daytona 500 next Sunday. For the fourth straight year, a pleasure to throw it up to Alan Bestwick, Wally Dollenbach, and Benny Parsons. Bill, thank you. You know, it's an, an easy line for any race under the night, to, under the lights at night. I thought it was an easy line <laughs> to say the atmosphere is electric here, but I'm telling you, the fans, BP, the drivers, even the broadcasters, we're all charged up. I mean, I'm so excited. I haven't seen a good live stock car race for over two months now. Can't wait to see the green flag drop and this 2004 season get underway. Walking through the garage area, all the crewmen, they're so excited about, let's get this thing going. We're tired of working on race cars. Let's see him race. But Wally, tonight, a lot of pressure on these crews when the cars make that pit stop. Yeah, as usual, you can win or lose this thing on pit lane, but especially tonight. Not only for the crews, the crews have to be right on. They got one shot of getting it right. They can't make any mistakes, but the drivers can't screw up either. They've got to get on pit lane and off pit lane. The transmissions are a weak spot, especially on these restrictor plate races, so everybody's got to hit it just right. So big drama over the final pit stop. Tony Stewart, Dale Jr. starting at the back of the pack. Should be a lot of fun. The Budweiser shootout at Daytona gets underway in just a few minutes. The Budweiser shootout at Daytona, the dash for cash among last season's fastest drivers, gets underway shortly here at the World Center of Racing. Let's go trackside for tonight's opening ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as the Embry-Riddle ROTC Joint Color Guard present tonight's colors. And now, please welcome Reverend Hal Marshman as he delivers tonight's invocation. 
Almighty God and Father of all mankind, we thank you for this wonderful spot with all of the people gathered here, and we invoke your blessings upon all who are involved, and we pray that you will help us to be better citizens and better people. Shalom and amen. Please remain standing and welcome pop music recording artist Mila as she sings our national anthem. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleam? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fire? O'er the ramparts we watch Was so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof to the night That our flag was still Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Gentlemen, please welcome back Carrie Drymonis for those most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines! racing engines run it again. The start of the Budweiser shootout at Daytona in the 2004 NASCAR season is next on TNT. The Budweiser shootout on TNT brought to you by the new four for all pizza. Everyone gets the toppings they want and it's only a pizza hut. Dodge, you can take life as it comes or grab life by the horns. Dodge, singular, the wireless company that fits you best. A new Prilosec OTC, making one pill a day, 24 hours, zero heartburn possible. TNT Sports live at Daytona International Speedway to get things started with Speed Weeks 2004. It's the Budweiser shootout. 19 drivers looking for a big piece of a million dollar purse. Let's let them introduce themselves to you. Hi, I'm Jeremy Mayfield. I got my bud for last year at Talladega. Hi, I'm Jeff Gordon. I've been in 10 Budweiser shootouts, and I've won two. Hi, I'm Jamie McMurray, and this is my first Budweiser shootout. Hi, I'm Dave Blaney. I won my first career Bud Pole at Rockingham in the spring of 03. I'm Kevin Harvick, and I won my Bud Pole at Indianapolis, and I won the race. Hi, I'm Terry Labonte, and I won the Budweiser shootout in 1985. Hi, I'm Mark Martin, winner of the 1999 Budweiser shootout. I'm Boris Said, and this is my first Budweiser shootout. Hi, I'm Elliot Sandler. I won my Budweiser polls in 2003 at Darlington and Talladega. Hi, I'm Bill Elliott. I won the Bud Shootout in 1987. I plan on winning it in 2004. Hi, I'm Rusty Wallace, winner of the 1998 Budweiser Shootout. Hi, I'm Bobby Devon, and I got here because I won four Bud polls in 2003. Hi, I'm Mike Skinner. This will be my fifth Bud Shootout, and I got my poll last year at Richmond. Hi, I'm Ken Schrader, two-time Bud Shootout. I'm Dale Jarrett, two-time winner of the Bud Shootout. Hi, I'm Ryan Newman, and I won 11 Bud Pulls last year. I'm ready to win the Budweiser Shootout. Hi, I'm Jimmy Johnson. This is my second Budweiser Shootout appearance, and I won the Pulls last year at Pocono in Kansas City. Hi, I'm Tony Stewart, two-time winner of the Budweiser Shootout. Hi, I'm Dale Hart Jr. I'm the defending champion of the Budweiser Shootout. 
Pretty neat looking field, isn't it? Got Jeff Gordon up front with Jeremy Mayfield. You got Kevin Harvick in the middle, way in the back. Jimmy Johnson, Tony Stewart, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Everyone is concerned, can they keep the eight car behind them? He is fast again this year. And that's not way, way too far in the back, really, for this place. I bet you those cars in the back, there's a couple of them that are pretty quick. They're going to get to the front. While the 19 drivers are heading out onto the racetrack to begin their parade and pace laps, remind you that the format for tonight's race is a 20-lap segment followed by a 10-minute break, then a 50-lap segment in which they'll have to make somewhere a pit stop to have fuel to go to the finish. BP, I think in those first 20 laps, you're going to see a lot of courtesy, a lot of drivers driving like gentlemen, but it's not going to be like that in a second second. The last 20 laps, forget it. This parade and pace laps take a little bit here at Daytona, so we're going to squeeze another commercial break in here so we can show you that entire first 20-lap segment uninterrupted here on TNT. The 26th running of the Budweiser shootout at Daytona is set to go. The King of Beers putting up big money for the Kings of Speed to get this season started. Before the green flag, let's check some final stories from Pit Road. Matt Yoakum, you're first. Well, Bobby Labonte will attempt to his partner Joe Gibbs' his third Bud shootout winning trophy in the last four races. But team manager Jimmy Makar says tonight, 75% of tonight's race is about learning for next weekend's Daytona 500. 25% going for the big money. I'm sure that agenda will change if he's up at the front near the end. Bobby Labonte's never won the Bud shootout. Maybe tonight's the night. To Marcus Snyder. Matt Roush Racing has five Nextel Cup teams, but only one in this race. Mark Martin, who is driving a brand new car that crew chief Pat Trison wanted to bring for the Daytona 500, but it wasn't ready in time for January preseason testing. They put it in the Bud Shootout, and Mark just described the car, the car to me as very powerful with a great engine and handling just good enough to win this thing. He may not have teammates in the race tonight, but he may be good enough that he won't need them. Dave? Marty, just before they fired engines, I spoke with Ken Schrader. Asked him what was different this year than last year. No, he's won this Bud Shootout two times. He said, last year, I didn't know what I had, and he finished sixth. This year, he does know what he has, more confidence in his car, and a new three-year sponsor in Schwann's on that vehicle. Bill? Dave, Wally talked about it a little earlier. This track is two and a half miles long. These pit stalls are about 29 feet long and 16 feet wide. What happens in the pit stall could determine who crosses that finish line first. Drivers will be worried about their brakes when they come to pit road. Teams will be worried about their tires. Crew teams will be worried about their crews. Why? Because just about every crew along pit road has some kind of new personnel going over the wall. And this is their first test, Alan. Yeah, hate to be the guy in your first test that makes the mistake that cost you the race. And it's very chilly tonight, so again, that throw that in the mix as well. Let's talk about first night out for a driver. He's had some practice between Friday and today. Does he have jitters right now behind the wheel before he starts? I don't think he does, only because these guys have been in race cars all winter long. It's not like they've really just laid back for two or three months, and now this is really the first time back in the car. I, I, I think they're ready to go. They're excited that it's getting started again, but I don't think there's any jitters. See the guys weaving the car back and forth, trying to put get those tires, a little bit of flex in them, so when they go down and turn one, it'll be just like they have practiced. Just update you on a couple of rules for the evening to remember. On an initial start of a NASCAR race, the drivers come across the start-finish line double file, and the second-place guy at the outside row can't beat the inside pole guy to the line, and you can't pass before you cross the strike. Well, it's going to be that way on all the starts tonight. All the restarts will be double file, but that guy on the outside can't beat the guy on the inside of the line, and you can't pass until you cross the start-finish line. That's different from a normal race. Sometimes you may forget that when the rules change like that. And you say, why doesn't Dale Earnhardt Jr. just lay back, give him a good start, and pass about 10 of these guys coming down to the line? Because you can't. You've got to cross the start-finish line in the position you start in. And one other thing, that yellow line on the inside of the racetrack. Remember in Daytona as well as in Talladega, that's out of bounds. You can't go below that line and advance your position. If you do, you're penalized. 20 laps is the first segment of the Budweiser shootout. If we're caution-free, we're commercial-free. You'll see it all here on TNT. The Corvette race car is off, and the first green flag of 2004 is about to wave. Here, here, BT. Yeah, 
thinks yep. about a lap or so to get completely up to speed. Probably a lot of these guys are out of high gear right about here. That's Bill Elliott that shuffled wide in that red car for Ray Evernham. Almost in contact as these cars came off the second corner. Mayfield and Jeff Gordon up front. We've got to figure out which line is best tonight. The inside, outside. <laughs> so far, it's pretty even. You just don't want to be in a line by yourself. It's like Bill Elliott up there yeah. by himself. You go backwards in a hurry. Jeff Gordon leading lap one by about a fender. But here comes Mayfield back on the inside. Body to body out. Or said they're in the middle. Black car, the U.S. Army machine. And he said to himself, now, what did I do wrong <laughs> to get this position? It's not where he wants And your to answer be. would be, he wasn't looking in the mirror. Got to be careful, especially when you get into these corners here. Guys will go up high, and they'll put you in the middle. Look at Bobby Labonte's car darting around the green car in the middle. And that's exactly what Trader just did to Bobby Labonte. And it's still Jeremy Mayfield will lead this lap. Out from third. Ooh, to the inside, oh, Jamie McMurray. Squeezing it in there. Wow. Now he's putting Jeremy Mayfield in 19 car where he doesn't want to be in the middle with no draft and help him turn. In the middle like that, normally your car is very loose. The car wants to get sideways. So. Boy. You don't want to get too close to the car on the outside, especially when you're in the corners, when you're in the middle. Six is Mark Martin. We're going to be paid for this race. 19 is Mayfield. 23 up top is Dave Blaney. That's Bill Davis racing. Dodge machine here. And that 23 car looks a little squirrely up there going in three on that high side. And three deep for the fourth spot on back. You got to be really paying attention to all around you right now. The eight car is strong enough that may help the 48 car up now. Jimmy Johnson got down on the low line, so he's not in the middle any longer. Well, Junior's taking that Budweiser car up to the 12th position. Bill? Benny, I know you talked to these guys in the garage leading up to this race. Very confident in this car, this brand new car that Earnhardt Jr. is driving. Just a tick slower than the car they have entered in the Daytona 500. They knew their car was good. Their chances are great. Bill, the guys in the booth have been talking about using your mirror for Jeff Gordon leading right now. His spotter is also his mirror. He reminds him as he's leading what the rows are doing behind him. Two rows of two, then a row of three. One car behind you, then a row of three, then two rows of two. He's telling Jeff every moment of his race how many cars there are. And thought Mayfield was not as good as he was, and he was going to give him two or three laps. If he wasn't out of his way, he was going to force his way to the front. That's exactly what he did. Forced his way to second behind Jeff Gordon with Kevin Harvick third. And now that Jimmy Johnson led freight train pulling Dale Jr. and Tony Stewart toward the front. Now Jamie's got to be watching this mirror. And if he thinks that Harvick is going to make a run on him, if he'll move and time it just right, Harvick will help push the 42 car by Jeff Gordon. From under the 42 car, just the car bottoming out. Not really a problem unless it is too hard. And it, then it will upset the car and bother the driver. Our aerial coverage tonight provided by Budweiser, the king of beers. So Jeff Gordon leading, Jamie McMurray second, Kevin Harvick third. And Gordon low the block as McMurray took a quick peek under him. Marty? Jamie McMurray and Kevin Harvick had a conversation right before they got in their cars and kind of agreed to work together. They think they're both fast for this 20 lap segment. So we'll see if the agreement holds up for the entire 20 laps. Well, that agreement almost went out the window off the try over because Jamie McMurray, that 42 car, he wants the lead. He was trying to look under the 24 car. But if he falls out, he doesn't have help. He's going to lose all that and more. Junior kind of got separated from Jimmy Johnson by Mark Martin and his progress kind of stalled out there. Huh? And here comes the 38 car, Elliot Sadler, who is very optimistic about his chances tonight and next Sunday as well. Tony Stewart trying to hang with Dale Jr., Bill. 
And that's a good way to put it, too. Try and hang. This team has struggled with this car and with their Daytona 500 car since they got here. Not very pleased with how it's performed, but optimistic that with a little help, Tony might be able to get to the front. A lot of these guys talk about the first 20 laps being a feeling out process, knowing where your car will run, how it runs in certain places, and who you can and cannot follow. Some pretty serious lessons here in this pack. And that's right. What, what Bill's talking about, who you can and can't follow. There are going to be cars out there that you get behind that your car drafts really, really well with for whatever reason. So you're trying to look for somebody that is going to help pull you along and vice versa. And there may be a car you get behind you just don't, your car doesn't feel right behind that car. So therefore, if it's a Dodge, you don't want to around any Dodges. And here goes Junior up on the outside of Johnson, a power move on the outside. Heck of a run there. Got some help from Elliott Sadler, the 38 car. Johnson shuffled back in that middle lane. Now with Junior coming on the outside, you may see one of these guys in second or third jump out in front of Junior, try to help get a push to the front. <laughs> and Jimmy Johnson's got to be thinking, okay, I pulled you all the way up through that traffic. And he left me. Looks like Junior might need someone in front of him to merely really make that Budweiser car go. Johnson trying to fall the line there. He's in front of Tony Stewart. And the outside lane. We're down on the inside. But uh, it's Boris Said that's there impeding that line as far as him moving into it. Stewart's up there on the high side. He's got nobody behind him. And he's just going to shuffle right to the back. Right to the back. Something that's new here at Daytona this year as part of the general all-around reconfiguring of the cars that's happening in some of the other tracks. Goodyear has a slightly different tire at Daytona. The sidewall flexes a little more. More importantly, it wears a little faster. People were talking that in this 20-lap sprint, they didn't think that would be a big deal, but these drivers are going to be learning a lot about how their car might handle later on in the 50-lap segment. Right. On the tires that wear more quickly. Dave? Okay, Elliott Sadler, guys, a guy who's very focused on these restrictor plate races. After last year, getting the pole at Talladega and then having the flip late in the race, he was very focused on doing well here. Quit final practice for this race yesterday very early. The team very confident that the work they've done over the winter is paying off here at Daytona. Matt? And his teammate, Dale Jarrett, he's just feeling out the 88 car, just waiting to see what it will do with the new aero package and with this new tire. He says he will not push the car for the first 20 lap segment, just trying to learn, get himself in position. He's won here before, he's won this race before, he's just setting himself up for another. And we talk about the new tires, talking to the crews today, yesterday, they all feel like in that last 50, 50 lap run, they've got to change four tires on that pit stop. Last year, Junior won this race, did not change tires in that 50 lap run, but it will not be that case tonight. No, absolutely not. There's a, you know, you know these tires, like Alan was talking about earlier, they're, a lot of the drivers are talking about being slimy feeling. And with the, the construction of the tire, they're softer. So when you get in the corner, you load the car so much in the corners here, it's incredible. And that rear of the car starts twitching, and it feels like the car's loose. Matt, what do you got going? Well, we talked about last year's race. Jimmy Johnson, they were planning on taking on two tires, but he and another car smoked all four tires on entry. They had to go with four. But like a lot of crew chiefs have talked about this morning, with the way this tire is wearing, plan on four tire stops. So that shouldn't be a factor tonight. Uh, I'll, I'll place a friendly wager with both of you right now that there will be at least one, if not a handful of teams. I want a part of that. That will try I, just right side tires on that last pit stop. Uh, if it is, then it'll be the guys that are desperate, I think. Are you in, Weber? And what side I'm with you, you Alan. You yeah. know somebody. Two or three guys are going to have to try it. They'll be in a nothing-to-lose situation. Absolutely. Right. I think they're going to be desperate. Marty. I talked to Donnie Wingo, the crew chief for Jamie McMurray. He said you need about three or four cars to do it with you, and if they'll do it with you, he would be willing to do it. I said, even if you're running in the top five, he said, even if I'm running in the lead. Wow. That's going to be interesting to see. That's in the second 50-lap segment when there'll be that last dash pit stop, probably under green, probably with about 15 laps to go. We're coming in on the end of the first 20-lap segment of the 2004 Budweiser Shootout live at Daytona International Speedway on TNT. Challenge for second place, Kevin Harvick in the 29 under Jamie McMurray. And he is getting a push from Mark Martin and 
Also, Dale Earnhardt Jr. And here comes Jimmy Johnson, maybe to save the day for Jamie McMurray. Got cars lined up behind him. And Mark trying to take a look on the, the inside of the 29 car of Harvey. Well, he's got a race car there, it looks like. Oh, you're the McMurray on the outside, challenging for the lead. Will that outside line work well enough to get by the leader? Kevin Harvick with Mark Martin's drafting help. Jimmy Johnson trying to help along Jamie McMurray. <laughs> Marty, how about Mark Martin? He's just having a great race, and I talked to him before the race. I said, what's different about this car? He said, you know, not that it's handling that great. He said, the horsepower difference is just unbelievable. I notice it from Talladega. We have much better engines this time around. Oh, did you see that move by Harvey? A little crossover. Just Got a little a crossover and gut situation. Harvey picking up Jimmy Johnson's help from behind. Here comes Junior into the mix. Junior and McMurray for second. I see Kemper run right in the middle of the racetrack. Right down on the bottom that time. Before they were stacked up behind him, he'd run right down the middle. Not giving any advantage to either lane behind him. Coming through, Bill. And very quiet on the radio, Wallen, but you know this is a perfect situation for him. He loves these kind of places. He has a love affair with this track, despite its history with his father and his family. But this is Earnhardt Jr.'s kind of situation. Running second, trying to get first back. Let's see what happens. Elliot Sadler there in behind Earnhardt Jr. A lot of different paint schemes for the two and For tonight, especially, that you take note from the end of last season. Jeff Gordon continuing to lead. He's been out in front since the third lap of the race. But behind him, it's about anything goes. Second spot, McMurray on the outside. Oh, the body got three lights on their back. How about Jamie McMurray, Marty? Having a really good race, saying nothing on the radio. He's driving car 005 for Ganassi Racing, more popularly known as Fender Puller. The one Sterling Marlin got out in the red flag in the 2002 Daytona 500, tried to pull the fender out. Sterling was watching Bud Shootout practice yesterday with Jamie, said, that's my favorite car. I wonder why he has it, not me. Oh, Elliot Sadler looking inside a junior. What was Jamie McMurray doing with his left hand? He took his hand off the wheel. It was like he's just resting it there. Just resting it on his lap or pressing the, his leg on the accelerator or something. Oh, look at this. Look at that move wow. by McMurray. What a run. Wow. Is something wrong with Jeff Gordon? It almost like he, his foot slipped off the accelerator or something. New leader, Jamie McMurray, with two laps to go in this opening 20-lap segment of the Budweiser shootout. Bernard Jr. now fighting Jeff Gordon for second. Dave, you got something on Gordon for us? He's got nothing on Gordon. No comment from Jeff on the radio. Nothing from up top. Nothing from down here in the pit. I think Jamie's just got a really good run there. Got a little bit of a push from behind him, and well, here comes Gordon now. Cut him off now. Harvick behind Jeff Gordon. Dale Jr. behind McMurray. The Jeff Gordon, we've not seen anyone be able to use that outside line to take the lead. Can Jeff Gordon do it? He has some help from a fast car of Harvey. I wonder if Gordon's car just kind of got darty there off the turn two and McMurray just kind of... I think he was looking for a different run. place to run, Alan. I think he wanted to try out some other stuff there. Just because he was out front for a long time, you got to see how your car runs. Just wanted to get up in that outside lane and see. Could he have moved up to try to help Harvey and his team car of the 48 get closer to the front? Yeah, there's a thought, too. Johnson's behind him in that lane. Final lap of this opening 20-lap segment of the Budweiser shootout. McMurray and Gordon. Double wide for the race lead. Oh, he's got his teammate behind him now, Jeff Gordon. Looks in the mirror. After they cross the finish line, the caution flag will be waved, and that's the way they'll line up for the beginning of the final 50-lap segment of tonight's race. And they will restart double file. Yep. Not single file as we normally see in NASCAR racing. So Jamie McMurray 
getting by Jeff Gordon late in this opening 20 lap segment. He will lead as they come to the caution flag and the conclusion of this opening 20 lap segment. Caution's out, field is frozen. Good job, Jamie. All right, now you gotta give your guys the information. Here's what we gotta do. Here's the adjustments we gotta make. I think the car is gonna be real good at this point with this move, these changes. So this guy's gonna be real busy now trying to make these adjustments. And they wanna get back to the pits as quickly as they can so they can check the temperature on the tires, try the wear on the tires to find out what they need to do these cars along with the feedback from the drivers you talked about, Wally. Pit road gonna be closed this time. They didn't wanna try and put the pace car out in front of that pack, so there'll be another lap around the racetrack before they get back to the pit lane. Jamie McMurray leads, Jeff Gordon second, Kevin Harvick third, Jimmy Johnson fourth, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in fifth position. The opening 20 lap segment of the 2004 Budweiser Shootout at Daytona is finished. Getting set for the 10 minute break and then the final 50 lap sprint. TNT Sports live at Daytona International Speedway where the intermission, the break between the two segments of the Budweiser Shootout has just begun. 10 minutes for the teams to tune on their cars. Matty? And Kevin Harvick started fifth. His car sits quietly on pit road in conversations with Todd Barrier's crew chief. He says the car is very good. The car is very neutral. I think we have a very, very good piece here tonight. Marty? Jamie McMurray started third, won that first segment, and uh, Donnie Wingo, the crew chief, is going to put a little bit of tape on the grill. They're also going to add a pound to the right rear tire. He was just a little bit tight. One thing they are going to do is also torque the lug nuts instead of getting them all the way with the impact wrench. He doesn't want the lug nuts to be too tight for the next pit stop. Interesting strategy. That's a really good point. Hey, Marty, uh, the 24 car of Jeff Gordon is in. They have already changed all four tires, filled it with fuel. Uh, Jeff complaining that the car was just a little bit tight at the end of the run. And as for that move, when he slid up to the high side and Jamie McMurray dove low, his crew chief, Robbie Lewis, told me that he thought Jeff was just trying to go to the high side to shake Junior and got caught up in uh, trying to pull the outside line. And in that instance, Jamie McMurray dove low and took it. Bill? Dave, they're torquing the lug nuts on the eight Budweiser Chevy of Dale Earnhardt Jr. after the caution flag came out, a very calm but very concerned Earnhardt. He called his car out of control. I have no grip on the front or the back. He said he doesn't like the aero package. I don't like this body. Track bar, air pressure adjustments for Earnhardt. Well, he's got a different car for the Daytona 500. Maybe it will be better for him. He told me that this morning he felt like that the 500 car was better than this one. And, okay, why would you, which, how do you choose the car, but you choose your best stuff for the Daytona 500. That's right. Opening 20 lap segment of, all right, Bill, go ahead. You got some more on Junior Force? Well, just to follow up on what Benny was talking about, the goal when they came down here to test was to make this car the faster car, but it didn't work out. The two cars Tony Uri Jr. told me this afternoon are very similar, so that might raise you your concerns about their Daytona 500 car, but they got a little time to work on that, Benny. Yeah, they do. Four lead changes among three drivers in the opening 20 laps of the race. Jeff Gordon led the most laps, 16 of the 20, and Dave's with him now. And uh, yes, we are with Jeff. Jeff, 16 of the 20 laps were yours, and then on the back stretch, what happened? Well, it just really depends on who's behind you. And, uh, you know, it was really in Harvick's hands. He, he chose to go with 42, so it kind of kind of put me odd man out. But, you know, uh, cars driving good. We we're out front. And when they get side by side like that behind you, it's just kind of a guessing game. And you try to hold them off, but they get a run like that. It's hard to keep themselves in that position again and uh, do it different or get in a position to, to make a run on those guys. We've got a real good car. I'm pretty happy. Ran well in the first 20 laps, Matt. And Jimmy Johnson, his teammate, talking to his crew chief, Chad Knauss, about the car, the little nuances. They made a small chassis adjustment. The car, though, very good. They felt like this car was very strong in both practice sessions yesterday. He could go from the back to the front when he needed to. Marty? Jamie McMurray, via a couple of bold moves, won the first segment. And uh, tell me about that initial move, Jamie, to take the lead. That was uh, pretty brave on your part. Yeah, the, the 29 gave me a big push. He. Uh, I talked to him just right there before the race, and he uh, he said he would work with me. So um, our car is really good, though. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm pretty excited. We uh, we struggled at tracks like this, and um, to run that well, that's pretty cool. Do you want to work with the 29 in the second segments, and do deals really hold up in that last 70 laps? Yeah, I mean, I don't care who I work with. I mean, you just have to get with somebody and and hope they'll help you, or, or you know, try to help somebody whatever you think will help you the most. But 
Um, it's going to be a lot different, I think, in the next 50 because the tires really fall off about lap 18. And, you know, we're going to have to run at least, I think they're going to try to run about 25 laps before we pit. The last 50, we should say, and remember Crew Chief Donnie Wingo told us that he would maybe take two tires even if he was leading, and now he's not so sure. Bill? Down here on pit road outside of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car, I'm listening to him. He is talking back and forth with Tony Urie Jr. on the radio, discussing the air pressure in the tires and the tire wear. We'll lean in here for just a second. You weren't too pleased with the handling of your car there, Dale. Well, it's like real good till we got up toward the front, and then I just, I either got real loose or just lost air on the car, and uh, a couple of them cats is really running pretty aggressive, you know, and, and we're drafting on the side of the car real hard, and I'd lose a lot of aero body, uh, aero downforce on my car when, when that would happen, and, uh, you know, we're going to lose a little bit of spring rate in the right front. This next set, that it'd be a little looser, so we got to adjust the car just a little bit. I'm fast enough, but uh, I think... I don't want. I wanted to be in that outside line there at the end, and I think that's where it's going to be at the end of the race. You win the race, the guys are going to be on the outside line there. We'll be watching for that, Matt. 20 laps in the book, Jimmy Johnson. The 50 lap chess match remains. How is your race car? Is it where you need it to be? Yeah, the the car is really good. Um, and I'm I'm surprised the cars aren't moving around as much as they were in practice. The sun's down, it's a lot cooler, and I really think it's helping the handling of the cars, but I expected it to be a little bit more of a handful in the pack. But uh, the car's driving great. You know, we came from 17th to the front, uh, slipped back through the middle, and then worked our way back up. So uh, having a blast. This Los Monte Carlo's running great, and uh, hopefully we can take home some money tonight. Small chassis adjustment, small tape on the front. They're ready to go, Dave Burns. And Matt, uh, Matt Borland and uh, Ryan Newman still discussing uh, what they're going to do in the second half of this race. And uh, very intently right now. They uh, changed four tires on this car a little tight, but uh, no chassis adjustments for Ryan. And uh, he sat here by himself for a couple minutes, and then Matt came in with what I think are some really good ideas. Guys? All right, you guys have been listening to all this. Drivers, crews, opinions, so on. Well, I want to go back to what Dale Jr. was saying when he said they were drafting pretty hard on the side of the car. It sounds like the way these tires are, BP, that if you have a car on your right side and you get up and the, car, or the tires start to go off, that air off your spoiler because you have a car close to you on the right side is even a bigger factor now than it used to be. Looks that way. It looks that way. Ten minute break in the middle of the Budweiser shootout is closing down. We'll have the restart coming up in just a few moments. Tonight's Cialis key moment so far, the late stages of that opening 20 lap segment, lead change. Going in turn three, McMurray, the 42, gets such a push from the 29 car. He said, man, what a push. I got it just blew him by Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. So after Jeff Gordon led 16 of the 20 laps of that opening segment, McMurray led the final three and will uh, be out in front to pace this field at the restart for the final 50 lap segment. Is this fun or what? This is good stuff. This right is now. really, really good stuff. Throw in the tire wear, the added distance in this last 50 laps, the green flag pit stop that's likely to decide the thing. we have got a lot of great action still to come. Bam. All right, the 19 drivers rolling their cars back out onto the racetrack. Take a break, come back and get you ready for the restart of the Budweiser shootout at Daytona. The Daytona 500, the Great American Race, kicks off next Sunday with a very special pre-race ceremony. The next L tribute to America. Grammy Award winners Lee Greenwood and Leanne Rimes join a cast of thousands to celebrate America and the Great American Race. It's the Nextel Tribute to America next Sunday during coverage of the Daytona 500 on NBC. Me, you, Wally, and President Bush. Yes, sir. How about that? The president's going to be here for the 500 next week. That should make an already exciting day even more special. Two laps of uh, pace car action before the green. Let's take a break. Come back for the restart of the Budweiser shootout. The Budweiser Shootout from Daytona International Speedway on TNT is brought to you by Budweiser. It's time for a fresh one. Grab a Budweiser. The race is on.
and the cars are on the track a lap away from the restart for tonight's Budweiser shootout. Featured part of deciding the winner of this race will be what will likely be a green flag pit stop with about 15 laps to go. Remember in last year's race, they came charging to that pit entry about five wide. Yeah, you remember this, BP? I do remember this, and NASCAR said you can't do that anymore. See the cones there? Here, watch, watch what happened last year. Give me mistakes. Easy stuff. These guys come diving in the racetrack, and they're all over the place. Three, four, five wide. That's a Bozo no no now. Yeah, like, the what? These cars, <laughs> Bozo no no. Because now these cars, once they get to those cones, they have to be single file entering pit road. You can't do that. If you do, you will be penalized. Somebody's going to blow that and take themselves out of a chance to win this race. Another thing you got to be careful of, a lot of times happen here if you're coming off the racetrack hot and you get on the brakes, it's easy to lock a tire up getting in. So got to be careful of that. Half a lap for the restart, Bill. Let's start with Tony Stewart for you, Alan. He said the car got better as the race went along. The problem is it didn't get good. He said, we talk about it when I come on to pit road. So I asked crew chief Greg Zipidelli, how's your car? He goes, not good at all. They want to try to put themselves in a better situation to help them. They made an air pressure adjustment, some other minor changes. Let's go further down pit road. Bill Mark Martin says they have a car with great power and a great handling race car. He said the middle is, quote, very dicey, but if you're brave enough, it could play to your advantage if you have someone helping you, Dave. Marty, the 38 car, Valia Sadler, very good. Only a slight tape adjustment on the front. They added tape, slight chassis adjustment for a little tight condition. Crew chief Todd Parrott has been on and off the pit box talking with the guys next to him about pitting, when they're going to do it, and how to stay out of each other's way. Matt? Kevin Harvick told me moments before he pulled off pit road, his car was very comfortable. He was extremely pleased with the fact that he didn't develop a push like some other drivers had. I asked him, where is the car the best? He said, off the corner. I'm like a rocket. I said, are you better up high in the middle or down low? He said, Matt, my car is good everywhere. Down low, in the middle, or up high. My car is just that good. Carter Richard Childers has six bud shootout wins. Maybe he'll get number seven tonight, Alan. 50 laps from the checkered flag. 21 drive, uh, 19 drivers, rather, about to start lap 21. And, and I think he can get away with running in the middle of this pack right now on pressure tires. I think once you get some laps on these tires, I don't think you're going to be good in the middle. Good start for Jamie McMurray. Well, we're going to try to answer all these questions in the next 50 laps. And answer a lot of these questions the teams have about their cars this year with a new tire. That's right. What we'll see people do when they make that car. We'll see anybody try fuel only, and how many people will try two tires? And if you don't have a teammate, I think you need to find one right now. I think you need to start looking at guys that are going to help you for the rest of this segment because you're going to need the help at the end. And body Elliot, body. Elliot Sadler is hung in the middle as Labonte goes blowing by the 38 car. And moving now up to the outside there. the body to fifth. Well, trying to take fifth from Junior. Except he didn't have any drafting help anymore. That's Dave Blaney in the 23 car. He won his pole last year in the 77 car in Rockingham, but Bill Davis gave him a ride in the 23. Here he is. In the seventh spot. These guys, front five guys, just stay in line while these other guys behind them side by side. They may be able to put some distance Remember between Matt? them. as we follow that race for sixth. Buck Gordon had a run on Harvick there for a second. Harvick getting up in a second spot there. Ahead of Gordon. Now Jimmy Johnson is on Gordon's back bumper, Matty. And the flagman gave the field one to go. Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson were talking on the team's radio back and forth, talking about how Jeff was going to restart the race. He told Jimmy how he was going to do it. The 38 team jumped in and told their spotter, Chris Osborne, we know you're going to work with the 24. Tell us what you're going to do. We'll go with you no matter what. Bill, watch for the aid of Earnhardt in the 18 of Bobby Labonte to try and hook up. The eight car needs some help getting to the front. He needs somebody to push him. Those two cars worked together well yesterday. Tony Urey Jr. told me during the intermission they want those two cars to try and run together. Can't get there right now. Marty. Jamie McMurray, Bill, exactly where he wants to be, not only in the lead, but on the bottom of the racetrack. If you see the spark shower from underneath his car, he is good on the bottom, too tight up top. He said, the one place I don't want to be is in the middle. 
Wow, Jeff got out of line or shuffled that line right there. It may cost him. Boy, Harvick looked like he had a run in McMurray there for the lead. Johnson goes by. Junior trying to get by Jeff Gordon. Blaney tries to get by. And Elliott Sadler trying to work his way back to the front. On the inside behind, Dave Blaney. Sure does. In the Arca race hill here this afternoon, the guys on the outside just could not go by. Oh, look at this! Harvick with a huge run down the backstretch on McMurray. <laughs> all, the passion, all the passion looks like it's going to be done on the inside. <laughs> you know, McMurray off of turn two got himself a big run and it's like he got too far out in front and that's what caused Harvick to have that rush at him. That Bill. eight car is strong, Bill. And the eight car, Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to stay on the bumper of the 48. Not much conversation under Green, but before they went back to racing, this was the conversation between Earnhardt Jr. and his crew. Tell me the strategy you want to holler at me later about that. Oh, the 20 and 18 one of the Take 51 to pit with them for four tires. Uh, all the cars are going to stop on that. 45 for four tires. So uh, we can kind of do with whichever one we want to do here. Like whichever group we're with, which one is running good with us, that's the one we'll probably choose to go with. Lap 45 is halfway in this 50 lap segment. Look for some guys to stop a little bit later so they have fresher tires at the finish. Earnhardt Jr. also told his crew the winner of this race is going to come from the high groove. And then he hasn't looked like that so far in this segment. Boy, it sure has. It looks like the inside groove is definitely the place to be. And just so we don't confuse you on the math, most of the teams when using their pit stop reference numbers are going to include that first 20 lap segment. So lap 45 will include the 20 from the first segment and 25 from this segment. Well, that's what you see on top of our screen there. This right. is lap 26 of seven. They'll be stopping, as I said, at 45 or 51, somewhere around lap 50. Hey, Junior's car gets into the corner very well. I mean, that's where he looks like he makes up so much pound on these guys, diving into the corner. All right, here, here we go. Johnson Junior for second, second place. Dave Blaney pushing up behind Junior. McMurray's going to get caught in the middle. And he is in no man's land right now. Better be careful or he'll be facing backwards, too. Yeah, this is where I think he, I mean, you just don't want to be in the middle from this point on. It doesn't seem like the way the tires are reacting right now. A lot of movement in some of these cars. Junior in behind Kevin Harvick. Jimmy Johnson to the outside with Jeff Gordon behind him. Harvick looked like he's trying to play both lines and keep either one from getting a good run out. There again, like I said earlier, what Jeff Gordon was doing, when you run right in the center, you really don't help either the low line or the high line. Oh, look at this. Is Johnson going to be able to make a pass on the outside? I don't think so, because Harvick now has Junior out on his back bumper. Well, Junior's maybe playing the middle there, too. Johnson is going to do it, I think, isn't he? Is he? Almost. Well, they are just fast right now. Kevin Harvick, into this race is the butt pole winner from the Brickyard 400, a race he went on to win last August at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Oh, oh, oh. Laney down to the inside. Blaney on the inside of the eight car how about that Matt. and a great job there the 48 now has his drafting buddy back with him radio conversation between chad and jimmy johnson jimmy was saying you know some guys may take on two chad said on our last stop i want to do four somewhere around that lap 45 to 47 mark harvick they can go to lap 51. Well, they're chasing dave blaney now how about that blaney to the lead marty what a run for these guys, BP. And remember, this team will run the Daytona 500, but after that, they have no sponsors. He started his career in NASCAR racing with Bill Davis Racing, and now he's leading the shoot at Fouth with Bill Davis Racing. Dave Blaney, former World of Outlaws Sprint Car Champion from Hartford, Ohio, out in front of the Budweiser shootout. 
Kevin Harvick, his second three wide from four whoa, on whoa, back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> now, just watching Dale Jr. He, he's in a spot he doesn't want to be. Talked about it during the break. He's when a car gets on his right rear, he gets loose, and he was real loose right there. And being shuffled way back in that middle line. He's got to get out of the center and start all over again. He needs to get back in the either the high line or the low line. Okay, now back down on the, the low inside. Line. All right, let's take a break here so we make sure we're back in time for those pit stops. Dave Blaney is out in front of the 2004 Budweiser shootout at Daytona. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. Mach 3 Turbo Champion, the official razor of the Gillette Young Guns. The Gillette Young Guns Challenge. Each week, a lucky fan will win $5,000. See Sunday's paper for details. How are the Gillette Young Guns faring in tonight's Budweiser shootout? Well, it's kind of hard to say right now. Because they're going to the front, going to the back, coming back to the front. <laughs> Believe it or not, Elliot Sadler, wasn't he leading the last lap? He was leading the last lap, but right now, Terry Labonte, Texas Terry in front. Feel very tightly bunched together. The lead, kind of accordioning, accordioning. Dave Blaney was leading, got passed by Elliot Sadler, who got passed by Terry Labonte. Then Blaney starting to come back to the front, and Sadler's been shuffled all the way back to 18th. I, I, from the lead. I think you get in the center right now. It looks like these guys just get out of the throttle because you can't run in the center. How about Texas Terry, Marty? I'm glad you're keeping up with all that stuff, Alan. Terry was a little bit tight in the first segment. They went up half. He has said nothing about the car in this segment. Jim Long just told me. I think that's good for us. Well, the fact that he said nothing. He's leaning. <laughs> Second place. Is that uh, driver eight on the outside? And that's where he's, uh, sorry, Alan. That's all right, it is. Yeah. Here he comes. That's where he said he wanted to be. Tony Uri Jr. told me before they went back to green, they've had the wrong rear bar in the car. It's too small. He said, any success in this car tonight, it's all driver, because they didn't give him the right setup. Wow. Rear bar, huh? Rear bar, they come. Boy. And, th and that is a surprise for you. That's a surprise for me. How about Elliott Sapp, 19? Uh, yeah, really really tough for him. Uh, he radioed in. He said, it got so loose, I just had to get out of it. He said, I'll try to work my way back up. Got around all those cars yep. in the center. He just lost the downforce on the car. And he was all over, just like so nice. And he better off just like Junior did. Get out of it. Get back in line. Take another run at it. And like Elliott did, there he is. He's working his way back. He's uh, up to 16th now. Picked up a couple of spots. Is his teammate Dale Jarrett there, the 88 car to work with. Okay, here's the plan. We're going to take our final commercial break of the race now. Come back for the green flag pit stops and take you nonstop all the way through the checkered flag. Terry Labonte leads the 2004 Budweiser shootout at Daytona, but all 19 starters are right there in the thick of it for the win. The 26th running of the Budweiser shootout at Daytona, live from Daytona Beach, Florida, on TNT. 39 of 70 laps, now 40 of 70 are complete, coming up on the dramatic final pit stops, and then the all-out sprint for the checkers, and the $210,000 winners pay off. TNT, your home for tonight's All-Star Race and Racing, and the NBA All-Star Weekend from Los Angeles. Friday night, the Rookie Challenge, the All-Star Saturday night, and on Sunday night, it's the NBA All-Star Game, all next weekend on TNT. Okay, now, Benny, it's got to be some communication when everybody's going to come in, because you want to come in together. Well, that's right. You have, when you go back on the racetrack, you just simply cannot go leave pit road by yourself because you're going to be doomed if you do. Close call a second ago on the back stretch between Dale Jr. and Jamie McMurray. Watch this. McMurray in the 42, Jr. in the white and red, eight. <laughs> Ooh. That was close. But there's been many close situations tonight. On each other, didn't they? They did. At 190 some miles an hour. Terry Labonte leads. Jeff Gordon is second. Kevin Harvick, McMurray sixth. Seven different leaders in this Budweiser shootout so far, and we've only run 42 laps. For 
first event, of course, of the NASCAR and Nextel Cup Series era. Then a great start to Speed Weeks 2004. So what do you think, Marty? When are we going to see Terry Labonte come to pit road? Well, the plan was originally lap 45 for the uh, 5 and 24 to come down pit road. Jim Long is just smiling at me now, will not tell me exactly when they're going to come down pit road, but they're still looking around lap 45. It'll be a four-tire stop. 22 years ago tonight, Terry Labonte made his first butt shootout start. He started first, finished second that night, Dave. Marty, Jeff Gordon's car, his teammate, has gone just a little bit loose right now, and the temperatures on the car have gone up considerably because he's been running in the pack and because they added some tape to the front of that car. Matt? Jimmy Johnson has climbed all the way back from 15th to 5th. A crew member from the 5 came down. He was discussing with Chad Knauss exactly what lap they're going to pit. So there's no confusion. They said they will come by and take a certain lap number and come in the very next time. Expect him in about four laps, Bill. They're just telling Dale Earnhardt Jr. they're going to take lap 49 on the track, come in on 50. Jr., after that incident on the backstretch, said we're no good up here. He didn't mean at the front of the field, he meant in the high group. And Benny and Wally, that bar I was talking about in the car was the front bar, not the rear bar. I stand corrected. Thanks. Uh -huh. That makes a little more sense. That makes huh? a little more sense. Yes. <laughs> make, yeah. Because uh, I figured I'd miss something down there yesterday if they're putting rear bars in these cars here. They come up. So here they come to complete lap 44 and begin at lap 45. So not this time, but next time by, we may see the beginning of some of these green flag pit stops. Marty? They're working on the strategy on the radio right now. Seven laps from now, four tires for the Hendrick teams. So on lap 52, they plan on coming in. So who is going to pit with Junior, you think, on lap 50? Because these cars are about a second and a half faster running together than they are by themselves if Junior... Right, BP, and which means he'll lose the draft. That's right. He's not coming in by himself. I think I'd be waiting to come in with somebody in front of him, just to be sure. Right now he's behind Jimmy Johnson. Racing to the third with Kevin Harvick is Johnson. Terry Labonte and Jeff Gordon are out in front, single file, and the rest of the field double wide from there on back. There's that word I like so well. Free. Free. There you go. I tell you what, th there's no way these guys are going to pit and not someone get double fouled. There's no way. Someone's going to get penalized for being, being double fouled. Marty. Lap 50 for Jane out here road, and it will be a four-tire stop. They chickened out. Everybody's going to change four Absolutely. tires. Absolutely. Everybody. We knew that. We knew that. No, no, no. Somebody's going to try to. Oh, well, if they on. do, it's going to it's going to be the wrong move. Matty. Looking about lap 49 for the 18. At this point, tires, Alan. He was a little tight on the low side. Earlier, he was loose up on the high side. He had to stay on the bottom. Now the car has gone to the tight side like Jimmy Johnson's. Weber, I hope at least you're still with me on this. Somebody's going to try two things. <laughs> Bill, what do you got? Uh, looking for the eight to come down on 50, as we talked about, with the 20 car of Tony Stewart. So it's eight and the 20 on lap 5-0. How many tires do you think he's going to take, four, Bill? Four, <laughs> four. But they're not all going to take four. I'm uh, if they do, Alan lost the bet. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, anybody that takes two, like I said, will be those last five or six cars, I think, running in the yeah, pack. Yeah. Won't be anybody up front. Well, that's my point. Somebody's going to try yeah. it. They've got nothing to lose. And well, these cars except, except control. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. Nobody breaking off yet. Nobody <laughs> waving yet there in the back. Anyway, no. These cars, the fuel cell in these cars, the gas tanks in these cars, about 13 and a half gallons. So they can run about 35 laps before they have to stop for fuel. So they could go to they could go to 55, but they're all going to stop about 50. Man. One lap ago, Chad Canal told Jimmy Johnson, "Keep your eye in the mirror. If you see them start to peel off to pit road, dive down with them." Huh. Like I said, they're going to be double file, spinning out, doing something, trying to get on pit road. Locking and their brakes up, smoke's going to be flying, somebody's going to get penalized, somebody's going to get mad. And watch for Ken Schrader to pit this time, a bad vibration, he may come early, and that'll confuse a lot of folks. Well, he's, he's, the he's in the, the back field. of the pack, so I don't know who's going to confuse. Yeah, he's falling off the pace there, Bill, and, and slowing down to come to pit road, so maybe Schrader thinking like they've got a tire loose or something like that in the Schwann's car. So here's Schrader on pit road by himself, which is basically going to hang him out of the draft and result in the end of uh, any chance for a good finish. That's too bad. 
Okay, let's watch down the back straight. We'll see Weenie. See any hands waving yet, Benny? Not yet. Matty? Chad Canals just told Jimmy Johnson, pick this time. The 24 is going to come with us. Expect just about everybody to come with us. Yeah, All right. We'll watch. Remember the commitment line at the entrance to Kip Rowe. You've got to be single file by then. Here they come. Coming in awfully fast. There's some Jimmy smoke. Johnson smoking them. Pretty good, BP. Yeah, pretty good. I'm impressed. Matt. A good entry by Jimmy Johnson. Makes his way to his pit box. Look for the four tires right now. The inside tires are ready to go on. The chassis adjustment taking place. The car was a little tight, Marty. The pit stop for Terry Labonte dictated by Jeff Gordon. They came on the radio, said the 24 needs to come. Can you do it? They said yes. Four tires, no changes, Dave. Four tires for Jeff Gordon. His car got a little bit loose going into the corner. They wanted a track bar adjustment to make Jeff's car handle better. Oh, yeah. He cannot get the left rear back on, and now he leaves. Forever pit stop for Jeff Gordon. Mayfield had a great pit stop. And Jeff is going to lose a draft of these cars. Now, here comes all the rest of the cars on pit road. Every one of them. Can they get in single file? Rusty, single file! They're working Rusty! Uh-oh. Well, he let him go. He slowed down and let Boris said go. Matty, go ahead. Bobby Labonte in. The car was a little on the tight side. Four tires stop for Bobby Labonte to Marty. The rush on the pit road. Jamie McMurray here. His car was just a little bit tight. They make a slight air pressure adjustment. That is it. Four tires, Dave. Elliot Sadler's car is loose. They will make a tire pressure adjustment for that. Four tires for Elliot Sadler. Bill? Four tires for Dan Long. Stop for Tony Stewart behind him. Stop for Rusty Wallace, who stalled his car. Rusty hasn't left the pit road yet. Oh, man. And he's going to lose the draft. And the only one I saw get two tires was Mike Skinner. We were, we were right, Alan. We were right. Yeah. Well, I know. That's why I wanted to make sure I pointed that out, Bill. <laughs> While he was looking at me. Well, well. Well, I, I was okay. Now we'll see how that two tire stop fares out. This guy, these guys made a great stop. They did, yeah. So, field beginning to come back together well, after the pit stop, and it's going to take a few laps for that to happen. But here comes that's Jeremy, isn't that's it? Jeremy Mayfield, Dave Blaney, just off the pit lane. He might have gotten two tires also. We need to double check on that down on pit road. But Mayfield will be the leader. Blaney is second. I am hearing on just two tires. Followed by Ryan Newman. Then Mike Skinner on just two tires. And Dale Jarrett up to fifth. How about the 88 car, Matty? Alan, you can add one more car to the list of drivers that took on two tires, an air pressure adjustment and chassis adjustment to the 88. He's a little loose in and tight off. Marty? Indeed, it was two tires for Dave Blaney and Jeremy Mayfield. See, Bill and Alan, you won the bet three times. How about that? But look at those four tires of Terry Labonte those going around here. We won't be watching them for very long. I don't know. Right now, they've got, uh, what, four of the top six spots. Ryan Newman in the mix on that. He got four tires, didn't he? Let's find out. Who's that, Dave? He did not, Alan. He was one of the other guys that took two. And that is one reason why he didn't pit with his teammate, Rusty Wallace. I just checked with his crew chief, Larry Carter. Larry told me they wanted to take four and then, unfortunately, stalled it on pit road. Okay, so this whole group at the front, except for Terry Labonte, are all on just right side tires. Right. Then the next group of cars closing quickly on these leaders. All have four. Kevin Harvick and Jimmy Johnson in that group, along with Corelli. Skinner about to get shuffled out by those three. Mike Skinner to Jim Carr, loses a spot, about to lose a spot, as you said. And here come McMurray and Jr. and Mark Martin. That's 10th, 11th, and 12th. Harvick was about four tenths of a second faster that lap than the leader, Jeremy Mayfield. And just by way of information, Jeff Gordon, after his slow stop, is back in 14th, and Rusty Wallace is back in 19th last after the problems he had when he stalled his car leaving pit road. And Jeff Gordon is six seconds behind the leader. Uh, Tony Stewart shuffled out of the draft. He's back in 18th. 
And Alan, that's because he also stole his car coming off, coming out of the pits. That's where he lost. Uh, and we talked about it. Those yeah. pits are exactly. it's everything. We talked about at the top of the show. The pit lane was going to be the key to winning or losing this race tonight. Right now, the two-tire car has been the key. It's gotten Jeremy Mayfield the lead in the Ray Everham Dodge. Followed by Dave Blaney, Ryan Newman, and Terry Labonte, the first with the four tires running in two. Marty? While you caught it at the beginning of the race, you said the pit stop was going to be the key for the Kellogg's team. 13.8. That was their pit stop on pit road, but will the four tires win out over the two? At Harvick's team, he reported in the car which is two on that last run. They had started the car a little bit on the loose side because it would tighten up. It was neutral at the end of that first 20 lap segment, but it was too loose this time. A wedge adjustment, hopefully that will help. He has caught that lead pass. Yeah, yeah I think he, go ahead, Alan. I just was saying, that's Terry Labonte's best hope, is this other right. guy with the fresh tires, also in a Chevrolet, to find a way to get to him and help push him through these other guys. Exactly what I was gonna say. One week from tomorrow, 12 noon Eastern on NBC, the Great American Race. The 46th running of the Daytona 500. Coverage begins with Discover Card Countdown to Green. That's one of those things where you just don't need to say anything more about it. Daytona 500, yeah. one week from tomorrow. No, that's all you can say. Fantastic race. And this was 19 cars. The Daytona 500 will have 43. Oh, yeah. We yeah. double our pleasure. And how many of them are going to try two tires on the last stop <laughs> with 20 to go? <laughs> Not many. Marty. Well, before the stop, Jeremy Mayfield was a little bit loose. They uh, added a pound of uh, right front, left front air pressure, rather, trying to tighten up the car. Jeremy said nothing since the stop, but he's been driving this entire race with a vibration. I just asked Kenny Francis, the crew chief, think he can hold him off. He said, we can hold him off for a little while, but I'm not sure if we can hold him off all the way. Now, you see this group, the six lead cars. We're going to look back from them to the cavalry, because here they come. Yeah. The next group. All with four tires, almost all with four tires from their pit stops, have linked back to get a little grab, and they're pushing their way back toward that front group. When they catch them, goodbye. All, all bets are off. Oh, no, goodbye. We, I see what's a 47 2, 47 point 2, 4 0 for Mark Martin, 47 flat for Dale Earnhardt Jr. That's 192 miles per hour, thereabouts. And the leaders are 47.90s. Oh, yes, they're coming in a hurry. Of course, Jeremy Mayfield started on the Bud Pole for the Fertilizer Shootout. Check out our NASCAR Nextel Cup Series race fact. Only three of these Budweiser shootouts have been won from the pole. 1989 was the last time. Mayfield trying to do it here tonight. All right, here we go. We have been connected. We are connected. Very nice. Marty. Well, before the hurt. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Oh, there they Boy, go. And Mike Skinner, nice save. I was going to say about uh, about um, Dave Blaney before the herd catches him, he asked his spotter, the relay to Ryan Newman's spotter, can you tell him let's back up just a little bit from the 19 car and try to get a run on him. We'll pass him together. That little. Ooh, it's oh, he got some tire rub, I guess, on the 48 car. I think he makes that more than a tire rub. Isn't it? Right rear. I think the right rear is Matt. Jimmy Johnson came on the radio and said he was bump drafting me through the corners. His spotter, Chris Osborne, is rubbing on the tire. And you know, they have these clearances so close now, BP. It doesn't take much right now to, oh yeah, he's got a lot of damage on that yeah. right rear. And well, who's and that? 42 car. 42, 42. Yeah. who was involved in this. Watch this. 48 into the 10, and then the 42 just nicked the 48. See the right yeah. rear damage? Yeah. And like I said, the clearances are so close between the body and the tires now to get these cars through the air, it doesn't take much to make them rub. What's a great save by Jimmy Johnson off turn four. He gets under Mike Skinner, makes contact with him. About that time, he gets hit in the right rear. Matt? Oh, trouble. Jeremy Mayfield, the race leader. Caution flag is out. Mayfield's Dodge all torn up. And he's going to go from the lead to out of the Budweiser shootout. Wow, man, he hit that hard, didn't he? Man, what happened there? 
Marty, you tell us? He just came on the radio, said, I just got loose, I got loose. Wow. Jimmy Johnson keyed the mic and said, Chad, the tire is flat. This caution came at the best time possible. They are going to change those tires. It could be a pretty good advantage. Do you think, Wally, fresh tires at this juncture? Uh oh, I would think so, especially the guys that are on so. two right now. I think I'd come back in and get those other two. Jeremy Mayfield has brought his car to pit road and is turning it behind the wall. Oh, they, Dave Blaney. Blaney got some damage when Mayfield bounced off the wall. Yep. And so he's going to the garage as well. Well, that's too bad. All right, what happened to the race leader, Jeremy Mayfield, off turn number two? Oh, uh, you see, we talked about it earlier. You have somebody right on your right rear quarter panel, takes the air off the car you're driving, and hang on. Especially when you're on just two tires, BP. <laughs> and that's one reason we won't see many two-tire stops in the Daytona 500, because you just can't control the you thing. You need that grip on the outside. See, watch him slide up. A little bit loose there. Wow, what a shot. Yeah. He hit right at that, right at that gate. Right at yeah. the gate, the crossover gate there. And look at all that debris flying around. Everybody should stop and change tires. Yeah, Because they not? might have a flat. Why not? But they do. That works into the hands of the guys that just stopped. Drifts are all around. Stay wide behind you. The rug's coming behind you. They're all around. Hello. Somebody. There's that crossover we were talking about. Hit right at the yeah. guardrail and where the concrete comes together. And that is a piece of Jeremy Mayfield's right front fender. I think it's his door. <laughs> Wedged in there. Fender door, yeah. All right, here we got Jeff Gordon in. And let me retract or correct something I said a second ago. Those guys that stopped right when the caution came out, they pitted while pit road was closed. So these guys have nothing to lose by coming in, getting fresh tires. Those other guys will still have to start behind him. Dave? Jeff Gordon is in. They are going to change four tires again and make another track bar adjustment to Jeff's car. They're going to change all four. Power is actually reported pretty good by Jeff. So just a slight adjustment for him. They've been chasing loose all night with this car. And a big break for Jeff. He needed that to catch back up to the group. Oh, he was right. six, seven seconds behind the leader. Exactly. Yeah. He was out of it. Yep. McMurray back in a second time, top of the screen. And Schrader was out of it as well. He's back in the race. Bill? Yeah, Alan, uh, Tony Stewart is one of those cars that pitted too early, but he had no choice, Felt He ran over something after the crash, so he had to come down pit road as could as he as soon as he could. So had problems with the tire, obviously. So he's got four fresh ones, but uh, we'll restart at the rear. That's right, Bill. And if he would have stayed out there with that damage, that tire could have come apart. And if that tire came apart, even while you're under the yellow, it will tear the fenders and the, and the hood and everything off your car. So the guys that pitted before the pit lane were were chosen include Jimmy Johnson, Jamie McMurray, and Tony Stewart. Mayfield and Dave Blaney have gone to the garage. Now on pit road this time, Dale Jarrett, Jeff Gordon, Bill Elliott, Elliott Sadler, Ken Schrader, and McMurray again. So Ryan Newman is the leader. Kevin Harvick is second, Mike Skinner third, Terry Labonte fourth, now Dale Jr. is up to fifth, and the field is going to be brought down pit road and stopped so that the uh, Debris and damage to that backstretch crossover gate can be repaired before the race resumes. So we're going to red flag this thing. Yeah, remember, these caution flag laps do count in this, so we don't want to deprive the fans of a good finish. So they're going to bring the field down pit road, stop them, and put out the red flag while they clean up all the debris around the racetrack and over at that turn two exit gate. One more look and see if we can see anything we might not have seen. We see the red flag about to be displayed. Jeremy Mayfield, the 19 car, Blaney in the 23. You're right, the 23 just takes all that air off the rear spoiler. He loses that downforce on the rear, loses control. And when you do that, you've got to go up the hill, chase the car up the hill to try to save it. And when you do, there's another car there. Into him he ran. He probably could have saved it if the 23 car had not been there. there. Right. But he probably wouldn't have gotten loose if the 23 hadn't been there. We talk about loose. There you see the back end coming around. He chases it up the hill right in the side of the 23. Now, here's where he gets turned into that crossover gate in turn two. 
Now this 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 is something that what was that? I, I do, I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring NASCAR race control, actually. There was something that confused me about where they stopped the cars, and they've just corrected it now. Look at a rotor back there flying. On board Mark Martin first. Now, under the rules for this race, if a red flag comes out, teams are allowed to work on the cars. They stop the cars short of their pit stalls. Now they're going to allow the cars to go to their pit stalls. So while they clean the track up, these guys get to work on their cars and try and tune them up for the final sprint to the finish. Big break for the Jimmy Johnson car and a big break for the 42 car. Jamie McMurray has, has uh, body damage. All Matt. right, Matt. Jeremy Mayfield climbed from his car. Sounds like he chased it, chased it, but couldn't catch it. Ran out of real estate there. Uh, you know, our Dodge was uh, as fast and just loose. I couldn't run very good traffic, and I uh, just flat lost it. You know, just running hard, trying to go for it, and um, ran out of room. It's pretty, you know, I told him all night it was pretty free. We gambled, took two tires, you know, and it may have worked out, it may not have, but uh, our Dodge dealer, JW Dodge, was fast, just couldn't hang on to it. Four, Wally. Yeah, it's uh, when you're loose to begin with, too, and you only take two, that's just going to make a driver's job a lot tougher because uh, two tires doesn't normally fix a loose race car. So the red flag is out, and as you can see, unlike a normal NASCAR Nextel Cup Series race, the teams are allowed to work on their machines during this red flag on pit road. Dave? Just before, uh, while Ryan was leading, uh, Ryan Newman, that is, uh, they were talking about uh, whether or not it would be good to go to the end if he didn't have to stop. And Ryan said, yes, it would be. So they were pretty confident in the setup. Now, when they came in, they stopped. And before they put the tires on, crew chief Matt Borland made sure that uh, tire specialist Ray Ocean had set the tire pressures where they wanted them. He, uh, he made the crew stop. He asked Ray, and then they went and put the tires on, double checking. Matt, uh, Marty? They had to convince Terry Labonte that he was, they were allowed to work on the car under the red flag. He questioned his crew chief, Jim Long, said, you better make sure, but they are indeed allowed to work under the red flag. Four tires for Terry Labonte. We're also going to put a little tape on the front grill because the water temperature was only 200, Bill. And that's exactly what they're doing on the eight car of Earnhardt Jr. He's already gotten four fresh tires. They're cleaning the grill, then they're going to apply more tape. So he'll have you know, more temperature and also maybe a little bit more uh, front down force. Also uh, take the tear off of the windshield and then go ahead and clean it. So Earnhardt Jr. sits here waiting with four fresh tires on a car that was simply under green conditions. So everybody's going to have fresh tires. There'll be a double file restart and probably about six laps to the finish of this thing. It's going to be good stuff. <laughs> Don't go Real away. Real good stuff. <laughs> Under the red flag in the Budweiser shootout at Daytona after leader Jeremy Mayfield crashed with Dave Blaney racing for the top spot in the closing laps. Budweiser shootout on TNT brought to you by Domino's. Get the door. It's Domino's. Budweiser, it's time for a fresh one. Grab a Budweiser, the race is on. And Levitra, new choice. Here now, ask for your doctor today. Under the red flag in the Budweiser shootout at Daytona with just uh, eight laps to go. And this just the beginning of the excitement that awaits. Speed Weeks 2004, all capped by the 46 Daytona 500. Spent one of them in the hospital. One year that we did win the championship, sped with a broken motor. It's just tough to win. I think that's what makes it so special when you do win. Truer words never spoken. It's just tough to win. But it's the race every driver wants to win, and it's the culmination of a busy speed weeks on TNT and NBC. Tomorrow, noon Eastern time, Bud Pole qualifying to set the front row for the 500, plus starting spots for Thursday's Gatorade 125s. See the field set for the Daytona 500 on TNT Live Thursday. Friday, prime time on Speed Channel. It's the opener for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series for 2004, Toyota's debut in the series. Saturday, the NASCAR Busch Series, Hershey's Kisses 300, and Sunday's Daytona 500 on NBC, racing all week long. And it's going to be great racing, too, from here in Daytona. And every other day, they're going to be practicing, qualifying, trying to get the car set up as well as they can for the Daytona 500.
Greg Zipidelli talking to the Nextel Cup Series official in his pit. You see Matt Borland there, center of the picture. Ryan Newman's crew chief. Jimmy Johnson's team trying to take advantage of the red flag to make what repairs they need to make to get that car back in the hunt. And that's going to make a big difference right there, having that body fixed a little bit better than what it was, because the way it was, he didn't have a shot. Oh, there was a parachute out there just dragging, catching all the wind, slowing the car down. Still working on that crossover gate over in turn number two where Jeremy Mayfield's car punched that seam where the gate meets the concrete wall. Of course, part of the uh, massive preparations for running any race is having all the materials and people on hand and an efficient plan to make repairs like that to the catch fencing or the barriers, the safer barrier at the tracks where they're installed. And you can see that in a relatively short time, the Daytona International Speedway crew has uh, made repairs and we should be just about set back to go. Marty. Well, Alan, as we mentioned earlier, 22 years ago today, Terry Lamonti made his first ever butt shootout start. He started first that evening, or that afternoon, I should say, and finished second today, trying to win his second ever butt shootout, getting some advice from old boss man Rick Hendry. Good job, Dick. Yeah, we got a pretty good car. We just need a little bit of a little bit of luck here. We might get them. All the experience you got down here, you don't need luck. You just needed a friend there a second ago, didn't you? Rush has been leading right now. And Terry will have a couple of friends behind him. The luck may already be in his favor. He will start second on the outside row because it's a double file restart. In his pits all night long, 19-year-old Brian Vickers learning a thing or two about who will and won't help you in these restrictor plate races. Bill? Greg Zipidelli, crew chief for Tony Store. First of all, you did have to come down pit road because obviously you had some tire issues there. Hard to believe we could be that far back and run over shrapnel, but we did. Yeah, I had a big hole in the right rear and we had to, uh, we had to get that off before we tore the car up. Um, four tires on it made a chassis change and uh, we, we pulling the wrong gear we, we 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 played with something last night transmission and a gear and um, we just figured it, that we wanted to try it here and see if it was um if it was a combination it was a long shot but if it, you know it seemed in certain situations last night it seemed like it worked really well as soon as we check up we can't get caught back up so uh, we just we know what not to do next thursday and next sunday um a shame we kind of had high hopes coming back here and, and trying to win another one of these things but um it's all right maybe we can we can still salvage something out of it here and uh you know we got the we got next week i know our 500 car is much better than the car we got here tonight and uh, we're looking forward to it all right we'll be watching good luck thanks dave bill checking in with robbie lewis on the 24 robbie a lot you guys around the car a lot more than i thought they needed to be what, what's going on with it Ooh, i tell you first of all dave i'd like to say hello to my sister who's recuperating back in canada and thank the doctors who operated on her she's getting better every day and uh it's been exciting Friday night, the shootout's what it's about. These guys uh, got quite a bit of work to do. The back end's just, they beat the back bumper off the car when we were up front there. They could hit us so hard. And uh, we got real fortunate there. Very thankful in that wreck back there. It was a mess back there, but we got lucky. The right front's got a little damage on the veil, so they got that fixed up. That defender's clear and good. Got four fresh tires and Jeff Gordon. It's going to be exciting. All right, Jeff restarts 10th. Bill? And standing on the wall, Tony Urey Sr., crew chief for Dale Earnhardt Jr. How is your car now, sir? Well, uh, we, we don't really, <laughs> this car just don't want to cooperate for some reason. Yeah. Your driver's working hard, though. Yeah, I know. he's not too happy with this race car we gave him. He, uh, at start of the race, he was uh, sideways more than he was straight, and uh, he just can't keep the car on the bottom. And, and now we uh, made adjustments on it, trying to, trying to keep the thing from turning sideways, and now we got it pushing off the corner. And he said if he's on the bottom, he's got to stay the bottom. If he goes to the top, he's got to stay on top, and then everybody's just driving through the middle. And, they push him back and he goes to the back and he comes back and I don't know we for some reason this car just uh, it won't drive it won't finish the pass it starts the job and it won't finish it for some reason so uh, we got to figure out what that problem is make sure we that, that don't happen again all right we'll see what happens in the final few laps by the way junior is led in every shootout he's ever been in except this one Marty like that Matt. Bill, sometimes bad things happen at a good time. Jimmy Johnson with the flat tire when the caution came out. Chad, how is the race car after the repair? <laughs> Unfortunately, the low Chevrolet is a little tore up on the right side right now, but uh, we got fixed up. You know, we've got, we've got, we've got. <laughs> What's he saying? <laughs> blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah. Um, you know, we've got four fresh tires on there, and, you know, the car's running really good, as you can see. We just got drilled in the back end by the 42, just drilled them. And, uh, but, you know, the, hey, the car's running good. We'll get, some, we'll get them back out there, and we'll see what happens. 
It's one of the neat things about these special events. You can work on your cars under red. There's, you know, it's just utter chaos, and that's that's kind of what they like, right? Go back to your driver. I think he's still saying blah 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 blah. To Dave. And with Matt Borland now, uh, 12 car in lead at the moment. Before he came in, Ryan said it seemed like he was ready to go with just a two-tire change. So what have you done to it now with four new tires to make it better? Uh, the four new tires yeah. <laughs> make it a lot better. That uh, definitely helped us out. And uh, he was getting a little loose, so we tightened it up a little bit for him. And uh, just to, have to see how it goes. We're, we're not that fast out front, so we'll just have to see if we can uh, hold Harvick and those guys off. They're out front now. They haven't been all night, Marty. Well, Dave, crew chief Donnie Wingo is busy working on Jamie McMurray's car, so we'll talk to team manager Tony Glover, and uh, he was in the middle of that 48 stuff. What happened out there? Do you know? I'm not sure. Uh, I guess we got, uh, got had some contact with somebody. I, I'm really not sure what happened. Uh, it's a shame. We had a really good car, but Donnie and the guys did a good job putting uh, putting her race car back together. I think I think we'll be okay. Still got time left. Yeah, and we can work on this thing under the red flag, which helps out. Think they can still get up there and uh, contend? I think so. All right, the car looks pretty good from here. A lot of tape on it, though, Matt. And let's talk to Michael Fatback and Swain. There you go. How, how is the car now, Fatback? The car's pretty good. I mean, you know, we us in the 24, we were catching that pack there. It was, thought it was going to be pretty interesting. Uh, but this will line us all back up to be seven, eight to go. Uh, definitely going to be interesting. I see a minor chassis adjustment taking place when we look down pit road. Yeah, just a little bit. I mean, we uh, tried to put a little oil heat in it, free the car up just a little bit. So we can go get after here and get this trophy here. We gotta, we gotta stop this Budweiser guy from winning the Bud shootout all the time. Now, if you do that, are you gonna do your dance like you did in Homestead when you won? Uh, absolutely, because I, you know, I had one. Only I ever won down here was a uh, 125. So we we'll stop that Budweiser guy here. Could be really big, Bill. With Ryan Pemberton, crew chief for Boris said the road racing expert making his uh, Daytona debut in splendid fashion. And being picked on, I no doubt, over the radio now as we speak. Yeah, I'm turning my radio off right now. <laughs> I liked it better. I'm turning mine up. I liked it better when he was uh, when there were three wide. He was in the middle screaming like a girl there at the beginning <laughs> of the race. Well, you're going to get letters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, he, uh, he he's done a great job, and he, he's learned an awful lot here in, the, in a short amount of time. So uh, I have no idea. I'm taking my radio off. <laughs> I don't trust him. As far as I can throw him right now, so uh, no, he's been doing a great job, and uh, this is uh, this is uh, what we want to do for him. He did a lot of the great things for us last year. It's here's Point, Watkins Glen, and and we're trying to repay him here with a little bit of experience. Okay, they want him to roll back out. Ryan told me earlier, Boris's bigger problem, guys, was it was too long between shifts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the great things about now you won't see this kind of um, lightheartedness next Sunday in the Daytona 500, even if there's a red flag. Because every position is worth next Dell Cup points. That's right, but and, and it's the Daytona 500. Blah 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 blah. Right, Jimmy Johnson, I do that all the time when Alan's talking, so man, I can relate to what you're saying. Blah 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 blah. It never stops. Thank you. Nice to be back with you, too. I know you've missed me. Remember, this is a double file restart, too. That's going to make things really interesting when we go back racing. Dave? With Todd Parrott now, Alan, uh, did you guys make any changes to Elliott uh, on this stop? Oh, yeah. Made uh, several. We had ton, huh? Yeah. Uh, kind of fortunate. Uh, sometimes things work out in uh, mysterious ways. We're back in the back. Um, got a rotor or something through the headlight. Had to patch the hole up. and. Um, come in got us four fresh tires and um, you know eight or nine lap shoot out here and uh, got some pretty decent track position uh, cars really good actually um, got him a little too free when he was out front that one time got a big push from behind when the uh, 23 car got him a little loose had check up and uh, fell back in the back and then you know just uh, it's one of them crap shoots uh, you're pretty confident of that arrow duct taping up front uh, yeah, there well there you go BP it's worth a couple tenths huh exactly Hey, Pop Rivets and Tate, the greatest friend that a race car ever, ever had. Little all-star action NASCAR style tonight. And TNT, your home for 2004 NBA All-Star Weekend action from Los Angeles. Friday night, the Rookie Challenge. All-Star Saturday night, one week from tonight. And next Sunday night, the NBA All-Star Game. It's next weekend here on TNT. Well, we're back going after the red flag. Final stages of the Budweiser shootout at Daytona. And what a dramatic setup for the finish that we've got here tonight. Everybody's got fresh tires now. The two-tire, four-tire thing's gone. We've got a double-file restart and probably about seven laps to go to the checkers. 
and at least two more caution flags before it's over with. Don't you <laughs> yeah, think? and there's a lot of changes. Uh, every yeah, it's really going to be interesting. Ryan Newman out in front. He got that way by Blaney. Now he's had the chance to get fresh tires. We really haven't seen him be very strong yet tonight. Can he stay there? That's right. We haven't seen that 12 car as strong as he normally is. A guy who had a great run tonight, Dave Blaney, did not was not able to finish the job, Matt. Heartbreaker of a night for Dave Blaney. A great shot for the win tonight, Dave. We did have a good car, man. Uh, Philippe and all the guys had. A, I, I knew after last night's practice we were pretty close, and uh, if we could get a couple breaks, we'd have a shot. And man, I got to thank Whelan for helping us out, and uh, Bill Davis for bringing this thing down here. And uh, but we can have something like that next Sunday. We'll, we'll be in good shape. So yep. Dave Blaney is out, and Jeremy Mayfield is out. Now 17 drivers to go. What will be seven laps to the finish? Another guy that uh, really benefited off. All of this was Skinner. Yeah. Skinner made two tire change. Now he gets to come in, work on the car a little bit, put four tires in, and he's in a very good spot right now for the six or seven lap shootout. Mike Skinner in the 10 car tonight. Of course, he won a pole at Richmond last fall, subbing for Jerry Nadu then in the 01 car, the Army Machine, that uh, teammate car here tonight with uh, rookie driver Scott Riggs in for the next L Cup Series season. So they gave Skinner a ride for the Budweiser shootout for which he was eligible. Marty. I just talked to Mike Skinner's crew chief, Doug Randolph, for this evening. I asked which lane was working better for Mike. He said, actually, the top lane works better for them. I said, who's been helping you the most tonight? He said, nobody. Well, <laughs> and he's got, he's got a car behind him that's going to want to get in front of him really, really quick. So Mike's got his hands full right now in this restart. Well, it's been an eventful evening so far here at Daytona in the Budweiser shootout. We take a look back through what happened. This was late in the opening 20 lap segment. Jamie McMurray with a power move by Jeff Gordon to lead the final three laps by McMurray to put himself out in front. And they started really mixing it up. And here comes Blaine in that 23 car, that great run we talked about. There he goes to the front. Gordon to the outside. Lap 49, the pit stops began under the green flag. Jeff Gordon with all kinds of problems with his left rear on his stop. Dropped him what appeared to be out of contention. That's a great save by Mike Skinner really right was. there. Yep. Damage to McMurray and Johnson, two contending cars. Then Jeremy Mayfield and Dave Blaney for the lead into the backstretch wall. Both out of the race, but it brought out the yellow, then the red flag. Allowed all the teams to work on their cars under the red and set us up now for this final seven-lap sprint to the checkered flag in the Budweiser shootout. This is going to be good. Tense. All right, Bill. Uh, just we talked about it earlier. The eight wanted the 18 to push them as they're lined up now. Eight in front of the 18. Let's see what happens. They worked together well yesterday. They have not run together yet tonight. Fans come to their feet. Pace car comes to pit road. Seven laps to decide the Budweiser shootout 2004 here in Daytona International Speedway. Got a good start. This outside line has not worked well all night. Will it work now? Doesn't look that way. Oh, Harvick jumping to the outside of Newman with Terry Labonte three wide around him. Oh, man. <laughs> Terry Labonte to the front, three wide for second place, down to turn three. And Rusty Wallace trying to push his way to the front as he pushes the 29 car. Mike Skinner not up on Ryan Newman's back bumper enough to really help him. <laughs> that Terry Labonte does have a very good race car, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Harvick looks like he needs a little bit of help right here. He needs Rusty to get closer. See Dale Jr. there, fourth in that inside line. behind Mike Skinner with Bobby Labonte behind him. Rusty Wallace behind Kevin Harvick to the outside of Terry Labonte, trying to draw even in a bit for the lead. And Jr. drives, finally goes on the outside of Skinner, gets in the middle. Can he make it go there? Bobby Labonte went with him. Harvick takes the lead. Rusty 
Marlins pushing Kevin Harvick to the front. Now Rusty left to race with Terry Labonte for second. And Junior just pushing Dale Jarrett in the 88 car. He got too impatient. He said the 10 has to go. When it didn't go, he had to change lanes, Benny. So tense. One slip. It'll lead to a big wreck. And now Harvick is going to just be watching his mirror, trying to anticipate the... Running right in the middle there. Jeff Gordon, the 24 car, in the middle. Seemingly no place to go, but in the side of someone else. Wow. Oh, look uh -oh, out. More contact. You've heard the expression, oh, look at <laughs> Rusty Wallace goes into second spot, pushing by Terry Labonte. Kevin Harvick out in front, Matt. Harvick back to the high side, back down to the low side. His spotter's just telling him, keeping him abreast of which line looks like he's moving faster. That's why you see him moving around, trying to see which one he wants to go with. Right now, it's the Blue Deuce. Yeah, you're looking in the mirror. You, if you see a car making a run on you, you got to move up in front of them, and that will help them push your car even faster. Dale Jarrett with a push from Dale Earnhardt Jr. Goes to the outside, and Rusty Wallace going for the lead. Kevin Harvick moves up the block. Jarrett, Rusty Wallace, swing slow. Terry Labonte behind him. Three laps to go. And they are just pushing each other. But they got to back off and to get to the corner, because if you don't, you're going to spin that guy out. Jimmy Johnson trying to come up from the back. He's on the outside of Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart. Harvick's got to watch. He's got to keep an eye on that outside lane. He can't let Jarrett get up there. But he, I don't think he wants to give away that inside lane. He feels like he can be beaten if he gives that inside lane away. He wants both lanes. Yeah, that's right. He, does. he wants his cake and eat it too, huh? Until somebody takes one of them from him. There he is. Two to go. Jarrett outside. Wallace inside. Harvick trying to block them all. Ooh, that was close. Junior, can he give Dale Jarrett the push he needs to win the Budweiser shootout yet again? Dale Jarrett, a two-time winner of this race in 1996 and 2000. Kevin Harvick trying to win it for the first time. How about the 29, Matt? Last year in all four of the plate races, Harvick drove this race car, finished everywhere from second to ninth, did not go to victory lane. He wants to give RC his seventh butt shootout victory. We're close. Here they come to the white flag and the final lap of the Budweiser shootout at Daytona. Double wide for the race lead, Kevin Harvick to the inside, Dale Jarrett to the outside. That time by Harvick was just a little bit ahead of the, the lead. leader by one of a second, Jarrett goes to the front in the 88. Junior pushing Jarrett by. Now does Junior have a shot to get the move? We make it back-to-back -back shootout wins. Jarrett has got to make that car really wide right now. He's trying. Oh, Ryan Newman uh -oh. turned into the wall. Jamie McMurray, no caution yet. They will race back oh, to yeah, the line, absolutely. then the caution will come out. Here they come, to the line. Dale Jarrett trying to block Dale In practice today, they showed some speed. A lot of new members on the 88 team. And Dale Jarrett is going to take them all to victory lane. And they're in all the 2004, the Budweiser shootout. Matty. One new member is actually an old member. Who said you can never go home again, Mike? Congratulations. Yeah, it's glad to be back. You know, that's the DJ I remember. And, you know, it kind of hurt my heart the last couple of years to see him run the way he does good of people as they are here you know it's just i'm just glad to be back happy for these guys got a lot of talent here you know we're looking forward to racing hard from here out this has to raise your expectations for next sunday 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, we made made some decisions. We were planning on bringing this car for the 500 and and uh, made some changes to another car and felt like, you know, it was a little better than this car. So uh, we'll wait to see. You know, qualifying tomorrow. We had a good run in practice today. Elliot was good as well. So, you know, we're looking for a poll for the 500 tomorrow. And, you know, this is just great. Happy to be back. Mike Ford was a big part of the 88 team. He left to go to Bill Elliott's, and now he's back home, back home in Victory Lane. The last two times Dale Jarrett won, well, the two times that Dale Jarrett won the Budweiser shootout, he went on to win the Daytona 500 the following weekend. The last lap, mayhem down the backstretch. Ryan Newman, Jimmy Johnson, center of the screen. It looks like uh, you see Ryan Newman up there on the left-hand side, and he just goes to turn left, and he turns over the fender of Jimmy Johnson. He loses it a little bit and turns back into Jamie McMurray, which turns him into the wall. It's a chain reaction. Tell you what, it sure looks like that 19 car of Jeremy Mayfield, doesn't it? Yeah. And with such a small field for this race, the cars by the spinning cars and nobody coming in from behind. So NASCAR did not put out the caution flag and end the race right there. They let him come back around. And, and you got to look at these cars. Guys. People, you have to remember, these cars are literally on the edge all the time, even on the straightaway. So it's just a little bit of contact with another car cause a lot of trouble. Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. tried to chase Dale Jarrett over those final couple of laps for the win, came up one spot short. Chase him, he did, Alan, and uh, the outside lane was working. Did that surprise you, Junior? And, and for a guy who didn't have a very good car, that was a pretty good run. Yeah, I knew the outside's where I was going to need to be to make a run at the end. And uh, Jared was up there, and uh, he's a good friend of mine. Helped me before, I'm helping him, and uh, we tried to make a run at him on the last lap, but uh, yeah, he got, had a great car. Congratulations to Mr. Jarrett, I'm pretty happy about that, but uh, I'd like to have won it myself, but we just didn't, we didn't have an awesome car, but a great car by, by uh, the Bud team. And uh, it ran up on them and, and pushed people, but I couldn't get nobody to push me, so uh, that was kind of tough all night. Last three years for the Bud man and the Bud shootout, second, first, and second. Bill? Dale Jarrett came here with a very positive attitude, very confident in his car and his car, and his team in his car, and it paid off for him tonight. And Dale Jarrett sits in victory lane, ready to celebrate another win in the Budweiser shootout. The last time he won the shootout, he started 15th in the year 2000 and raced on one week later to claim the Daytona 500 championship. car yeah probably not uh, I got to thank my buddy Dale jr. Uh, he probably had the fastest car but he was knocking the devil out of the back bumper and that's what I needed to, to get the push by him and uh, I knew that was my my one chance was to keep him behind me and and uh, try to go by the guys on the outside but this is a really good race car man Mike made some great adjustments I was afraid I'd been loose in and, and that's what you don't want to be with eight laps to go but he adjusted on it during that red flag and uh, made it really good and uh, say hi to Kelly and kids back home uh, this was for you. Last two times we've won this thing, we've won the 500, so uh, looking forward to next Sunday. How wild was it out there tonight, Dale? You know, it was pretty wild, but uh, you know the cars drive really good, so it's stable enough that you can, can do some beating and banging a little bit. That's hard to believe at 190 miles an hour, but uh, you know, it, it was a lot of fun. Got to thank Ford and UPS, Coca-Cola for everything they do. You know, it's uh, last year was a long year. Great way to get this started. Yeah, the disappointing season, right? Yeah, off of, uh, yeah, we, we're not even going to talk about what year that was. This is 2004, and uh, we're ready to go. And Dale Jarrett's back in victory lane in Daytona. Matt, Kevin Harvick had the lead coming to the white, and you were trying to figure out which lane to go with. They were coming fast. Yeah, I think I got hit by Rusty four or five times, and then blocked, and then went up and got hit by Jarrett. And, you know, I, the bottom had been the best all night, and, and uh, the Jim Gooden Chevrolet was good all night. And, and the top just came like hell on the outside there at the end, and, uh, you know, that was just super speedway racing but uh, this GM Goodwin Chevrolet uh, was was awesome all night we got a lot of new sponsors Lugs, Purdue, Reese's, Coca-Cola, Snap-on, Sylvania, Duracell, Realtree and uh, everybody that helps us so a uh, good night to start off the week. He got them all and he finished third. Dave? Checking in with Ryan Newman first of all are you okay? I was fine yeah just talked to Jimmy and they uh, you know we were, we were all running hard and I went over and talked to him I said no matter what whatever happens so we'll watch it on TV I said well we're friends tomorrow I said just we'll need that stuff to happen but uh, 
it's a good run going for the all tell dodge and uh, we'll just go from there. You started the last segment leading. Did you think you could stay out front based on what you learned uh, throughout the night? Uh, no, but I knew we had, you know, being in that position, having track position, we still have a shot at running, running good and then having a shot at the win, uh, which we kind of did there at the end until the, you know, last lap deal on the back stretch. We were still in the top five. I guess that's a shot on a place like this. All right, he'll go out tomorrow and qualify with everyone else for next week's 500. Alan? All right, uh, so Dale Jarrett is the winner of the Budweiser shootout. By the way, he was running 10th at that restart with seven laps to go and wow. came through to get the victory. His with third help win from in this Dale race. Earnhardt Jr. Yep. I uh, understand they are checking some video replays, NASCAR officials are, concerning the final run from turn four to the checkered flag and some whether or not Mike Skinner went below the yellow line to advance a position. So we'll see. Uh, whether these uh, results stand or whether they're changed. That's Skinner in the white card down low. Well, he goes by a couple of cars, and he was below the yellow line. You know, the question was, did Rusty Wallace force him down there? Yeah. I don't have to make that decision. <laughs> and you're happy for and it? And I'm happy for it. All right, no decision on, the, on that yet. No doubt they'll debate that for a while. So uh, for now, Mike Skinner with a fifth place finish in the Budweiser shootout. What an exciting night, and it's just the beginning of Speed Weeks at Daytona. Noon Eastern time tomorrow, Bud Pole qualifying presented by Pizza Hut NBC. Thursday, the Gatorade 125s here on TNT. And next, the Mask of Zorro on the East Coast. Hope you've enjoyed tonight's Budweiser shootout at Daytona. A terrific night of racing to get the 2004 NASCAR Nextel Cup Series season started, and Dale Jarrett has won this race for a third time.